disappointed in every one of you. I'm sorry, I don't mean to offend you. I'm disappointed in every one of you. I kiss you on the mouth. No, no, I'm not, I'm not cool with that. Just, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. One more time. I'm disappointed in every one of you. I mean, I'm dealing with degenerate animals. Oh, 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 I'm, I'm disappointed in every one of you. Yo, yo, I'm disappointed in every one of you. All right, all right, come on. Honestly, I can't do it, man. I'm disappointed in every one of you. Let me tell you why. It's gonna be all right, Nicky. Go ahead, go ahead, shoot, shoot, shoot. Just kill a little fucking man. What are you going to do about it? Yeah, because you got nothing. You don't got a thing. Yeah, because you got nothing. I want to get out. I want to get out of this rat hole. I want to get online. I need BDA boxing. Boxing Podcast broadcasting to you live from the true north. It's a good friend, Mr. BDA, and I sure am glad. Sure am glad that everybody could be on board for this one, fellas. In this episode, we've got a fantastic one for you as we continue round two. Detailing what occurred last night between Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney, we'll get right into the fun of that and we will be opening up the phone lines. I'd say near the end of the hour. Although we did do two and a half hours yesterday of just pure phone calls, so we might uh, have to slow down a little bit on that, but we will get to more phone calls later on, like I said, uh, in about an hour, an hour and a half, depending on how everything goes here. But before we get down to the fun, fellas, let's get the business out of the way. This is your host, Mr. BDA, hashtag RNOTB, and uh, we got to get through a little business first. Don't forget, you can check us out on Spotify, iTunes, and Spreaker, at your leisure. If you want to donate a couple of shekels our way, you're certainly welcome to do so with the Super Chat feature, although it's always better if you join the membership program, that way you get more bang for your buck. Don't forget to join the Patreon, that's actually very useful to funding our future documentaries that we are in the process of making. And we're also going to try to do some little film analysis there, maybe a little film analysis detailing what happened uh, between Garcia and Haney. And uh, that's about it, don't forget to hit the like fellas, that's the most important thing. Hit the like, continue to subscribe, continue to spread the BDA gospel, especially on this very uh, uh, crisp looking feeling Sunday all right fellas don't forget to do that I uh, want to give a big shout out to everybody in the chat I'm talking about JJ some rando has shout out to some rando who's one of the initiated Trey Asun Sebastian 816 FUTV Jay Perez never sobers in the house as well shout out to never sobers Cerny Banders Bray Alejandro Solis hard recoil Alfredo Contreras fluffy toasters 89 protector general uh the quags in the house shout out to the quags shout out to ssc in the house as well another one of the initiated the anointed ones uh iron fist alan r john doe roy dixon uh eric v let me ace and more people to come i'm sure uh thank you for joining us fellas really appreciate it all right so let's get right down to it man we had a fantastic fight last night uh that actually turned out to be better than expected because, I mean, you ask most people, they didn't expect it, this fight to go the way it did. But go the way it did, it went. And uh, let me tell you, quite a shock to see Ryan Garcia pulling this off. I'm not as shocked. I'm, I'm shocked, but not as shocked, I, I suppose, as I could have been. Because, I, you know, well, we'll talk about that later. But, I mean, Ryan Garcia was no Regis Progre. Let's just put it that way. Uh, you know, Regis Progre before the Haney fight said, I'm not going to fight Mexican style. I'm actually going to do it with technique, with skills. Well, you see that you actually do need some skills to pull off the Mexican style. And you need some heavy hands too to get it done. And uh, Progre has a heavy hands, but he just didn't have that schooling. Meanwhile, Ryan Garcia, a guy who picked up boxing early in his life, and though his fundamentals may be lacking, nevertheless, his fundamentals are superior to Progre. That's not to say... That Haney would beat, excuse me, that Garcia would beat Progre, but it is what it is, fellas. Uh, them's the game. You got to look at each person's attributes 
and judge accordingly. All right, let me uh, call a couple of people here. Start cooking with some hot grease, as we like to say. Hold on a second, what's going on here? There we go. Calling people here and uh, BDA, Earl Stevens says, BDA bringing up the program's quote. Hello, I don't know what that means. What's the program's quote? Uh, I don't forget to hit the like, fellas. Hit the like, hit the like, hit the like. I will be, rem we will be reminding people of that as we go along during the show. I see we got uh, Jimmy, aka the Jimmy Reno, jumping in. Jimmy, um, we Yo. heard we heard from you briefly yesterday, but now the floor is yours to go in as as long as you like. What did you think last night? Thoughts, observations. Uh, Mr. BDA, give me uh, one minute. My phone's I have having an issue with it. Uh, can you start with somebody else? Just uh, I'll be right in. No, no, sorry, we can't start with anybody else. Uh, it's you've ruined the show. Pretty much, I must say. All right, we'll go, <laughs> we'll go with Chief then. Chief, I'll the cover Chief. you, Jimmy. Yeah, Thank Master you. Chief is here. Chief, go ahead, if you will. Uh, okay, I came in just as you were doing the opening statement. So, what we think last night? Are we talking about the whole card or the main event? You, you know, well, the main. Let's start with the main event. Your thoughts on on what happened? Uh, I've never been happier to be wrong. Um, the things that you and I said, and you said, uh, you, you talked about this a few times, that we said that Ryan had every tool to do. We just didn't think if he was going to be able to pull it together with question, and we showed that he could. And Jimmy in another chat room last night said if he had those extra three pounds off, if he would cut a few carbs here and there, not necessarily starve himself down, but just because he was kind of fleshy last night. He wasn't really ripped. Mm -hmm. So some people saying he needs to move to 147 because he can't make 140 anymore. His build looked like he could still make 140 if he would have disciplined himself a little further. And had he done so, I think he would have had the stamina to fish. De fit. Devin should be glad that he came in overweight. He would have knocked Devin out. Whoa. Colt. Not, not, Devin would have not been able to get up. The referee would have had to wave it off. Devin barely got up on numerous occasions. And his legs were wobbly when they called a few of those slips. The, those were slips that were brought on by those were those were winky right slips against Jose Cesar, Jose Cesar Vasquez kind of slips. They were caused <laughs> by a punch, and he his legs couldn't support himself, so he went down. We've said before, based off of the Linares thing, that we don't think he takes a good punch. Last night showed that. Also, you can say that Devin was killing himself to make weight. Well, guess what? Then you shouldn't have stayed in, at one forty past the the progress fight if that's the case. If you're killing yourself to make that weight also, you were kind of foolish to just stick around thinking that this is going to be an easy fight against a puncher and then fighting the fight that sets him up for success. So that's my take on the main event. Interesting take. I want to, I want to go back to that about whether the weight affected negatively affected Garcia or maybe just his technical deficiencies because he did still show them yesterday. Um, I, don't, I don't think Ryan Garcia should be getting too overconfident now thinking he's on top of the world because he did make a lot of mistakes last night and it was still a very close fight uh, despite the knockdowns. I see we got Jimmy back. Jimmy, are you there? Yes, sorry about that. Um, no, just an no issue with the headphones. Um, yeah, listen, I, I so I rewatched it, right? Because the first time I watched it, um, I, I was with a bunch of other people and it was, you know, I was paying a lot of attention to what they were saying. So, um, so but I got to rewatch it by myself. And listen, you just nailed it on the head. Garcia shouldn't be doing any celebration with this motherfucker. Dude, he knocked him down five times. And he still barely won the fight. You know what I mean? I mean, he won, absolutely. But he every time he hurt him, right, he took him to the precipice. But instead of punching his head off the cliff, his legs started going out because his lungs started burning because he was in shit shape. Mm. That's clearly obvious. He would just start, and then he was doing the same thing. He'd kind of run away and he'd put his hands up. And every time, every time, go back and watch that fight, when he put his hands up in front of his face, he had no intentions of throwing, which kind of blew my mind because he did it over and over. And Haney would kind of, kind of, and then boom, jump in. Goes to show his, his intimidation of uh, Ryan's power. He never threw a punch off that stance. And it took probably three rounds before Haney even started to realize, oh, shit, let me, this is my chance to jump in. Right. He turned and showed his back at least three times, literally turtled up and turned around. It was, 
if Haney wasn't so still scared about getting punched in the fuck. To the side of his temple. I mean, you can't do that. Never mind the ref. You know, the ref sucked all around. He absolutely, to my opinion, he was had whatever in the bag for fucking Haney. I mean, that that let me wipe your gloves six times up and down my chest. Walk directly back towards the fucking fighter instead of stepping to the side. And fucking Garcia went to the neutral corner, which he's supposed to. He, you're allowed to go to the center of the ring to own the center of the ring when the fight, if the, he has him, you know, that far away. The fact that he then have to back Garcia down because Garcia went to go around him and he stepped in front of him just to push him away, dude. It was egregious, egregious. Like that's the shit that makes me hate this fucking sport. But at the same token, he was so bad all around. That I think he said, fuck it. It's so obvious what I did there because Doc knows what he's doing. I have to be bad now everywhere. And then he, he let fucking Haney punch Ryan in the fucking kidney. Like literally, he stepped up to his back, looked at his kidney. You know, Haney went, who's, who's? Kidney shots were legal in boxing. And he was teeing off on his kidney. And Doc's literally looking down Garcia's back. Are you getting him? Are you getting him? You know, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like, he should have pushed it right away. Get away. Do that again, dude. I'm going to take a point. Nothing. So, listen, and then, you know, like him turning his back, I see him turning his back was. It's like, I can't get out of here. What am I supposed to do? Fuck it. I'm too tired to throw a punch. I'm going to turn. It was, it was an ugly fucking fight. It was an ugly fight. Listen, nobody gets jacked up because for me personally, nothing against that kid, fucking Haney. I got absolutely nothing against him. He's, for all I know, he could be a good kid. But they fucked Loma. He was like, fuck you in your rematch. Ran out of the building. You know what I mean? And then fucking the shit his father said, I got, because somebody wanted to remind me about Oh, Bill Haney, how much of a weasel that dude is. The mm. lies he spread on social media, doing the rounds to all the fucking people. And just, so fuck you. Your boy got fucking smoked. Smoked by a kid who wasn't even in good shape. And smoked him because he just doesn't have the chin. And we've seen, we finally have seen what happens when you get him in there with somebody who's big you can punch. And that guy see his hook. I don't give a fuck if that kid can't. Do anything else. The nasty punch. He swings that thing hard and fast. And he kept walking into it. He kept walking into it over and over again. Dude, it was it was amazing how sloppy that fucking fight was. <laughs> it was but you know what? The outcome is this. Garcia won that fight. He doesn't get the belts. The other guy's still a belt, you know, the champion. <laughs> which is awesome. The next day on Twitter, the dream is still alive. And it shows Haney's ass up in the air with his face on the canvas. It's just like, it was a disaster, but I think it was you, Mr. BDA, who predicted this is either going to be a fucking boring fight or a wonderful disaster, an entertaining disaster. Was that you who said that? I know someone in this panel said that. No, I and, think uh, you were right on the money. That wasn't but, um, me, but I will take credit for saying that uh, at least uh, the, I didn't pay Garcia to win, obviously, but I did predict that he was going to give him Haney a much tougher fight than people would expect and that's and that he was going to perform way better than Regis Progre did. Again, Regis Progre, before he fought Haney, he said, I'm not going to fight Mexican style. I'm actually going to fight with skills. You saw what it takes and you saw a little bit. It wasn't, it wasn't classic Mexican style from Ryan Garcia. Again, he failed to live up to certain parts of it, but it was certainly more Mexican style and more skill than anything Regis Progress showed us against Haney. And that's that's the thing, though. Haney finally fought a guy who was his same age, about the same size, if not a little bit bigger, who could crack. This wasn't a midget Lomachenko. Yep. This wasn't midget Jojo Diaz with no power. This wasn't old Linares, old Progress. And I'm, again, I'm not saying Haney's a bad fighter because I don't think Garcia is is anything special either. Other than the speed and power that he has, uh, he's beatable too. But but these guys were being made out to be something that they weren't. I, it's it's I think it's because the mainstream media and certain fans like to to uh, build up certain fighters so so that they can say, hey, I lived through this era. 
you know, the era of this fighter. And we already have guys that are making history. Uzik, Inoue, <coughs> Crawford. I don't understand yeah. why people have to, to, to uh, you know, uh, exaggerate the, the because social... Yeah. And to, to that, and uh, Mr. Bede, I just want to finish real quick, if I could. There was one more thing I think we noticed last night that is so clear, and this is dangerous because... They're gonna move. They're gonna move up Haney up to fucking Walter Way. I think mm -hmm. that's where he wants to go to after this. That kid has no power. His stance is so long. He is such ass out, ready to jump out of there every time he throws a punch. Instead of stepping over, like you see when Garcia throws that left, he's twisting his hips right up over the fucking his all his power coming over that front foot. Haney throws his power. As his ass is literally going backward half the time because he's trying to jump out of there. Once he's get hooked, I listen. I was wrong. I I didn't think there would be a snowball's chance in hell that fucking Garcia would be able to catch him. I didn't think Haney would fight like a fucking zip ahead. But I also way over fucking priced on um, Haney's power. That kid doesn't have anything on his shots. Even worse than I thought. Even if I think he tried to step into him, he's just not a power puncher. And that kid has no jaw. He is leaky. Once no, you he heard him, remember, Mister BD? Yeah, I said the. If I said with Garcia, and I'll be real quick to with this, I'll end right here for you, Chief. I said, if he catches him, this would be the plan with him, clearly. Catch him fast. The first time you get to hit him, hit him hard because it's not going to let him get so focused into getting to get into his tempo. Because once you let him get into a rhythm, hit, you know, jabbing, sticking, and moving, you get him into that rhythm, and then that's all he's going to be doing on you. It'll be a much different type of fight. But if you crack him and get into his head and you hurt him, and he did, he hurt him in the first round and put him on his ass hard in the fucking second. And Haney was done after that. Done. I like the narrative that he's, he ran forward to fucking meet him in the ring and go blow to blow. No, he didn't. That kid was hurt almost every round he came out. He was fucking hurt. And he had a broken jaw. Props on him to keep going with a broken jaw. Yeah, well, I don't know which can round I just broke, say something I think it was in the seventh. So, before but, Chief goes. Yeah, so before anyways, let me just finish. Did I'm done, Chief. Go. Well, before Chief well, goes, I just want to say, up. yeah, I just want to say something real quick. It's, it's, yeah, because oh, Jim, I'm you sorry, said, Mr. Media, I didn't hear you. That's all right. You said, well, you that you didn't expect uh, Garcia to land that left hook. I, I, I don't understand why other people. It's because Devin Haney's defense, Jimmy, was overrated. They were trying to make this guy to be Floyd Mayweather 2.0. Look, neither neither Ryan Garcia nor Haney has impeccable or diaphanous defense, but especially Haney. Haney was being more overrated. Diaphanous. His defense was awesome. I, I was thinking the same thing, Jimmy. His defense <laughs> was overrated for the longest time, man, because his defense, you know what, what his yep. defense is? It's a good jab. I've always given him credit for his jab, but I've also pointed out the fact that he always dips to his right. That's his go-to move. That's his safe move. He safe space when he has nowhere else to go and a guy is able to get past his jab. What, did he, what does he do? Dips to his right and lets the other guy jump in, get close to him, and then smothers him and clinches. But anyway, we'll talk more about that later. Chief, sorry to interrupt, man. You, you go. No, no, no. Uh, that, that, the, the, you just gave me a good point that I was going to um, gonna add to what I was going to say. Um, that that lean to his right thing is how Linares actually caught him. He leaned back and thought he was out of the way of a shorter fighter, and then he had no place to, to go any further. But without, well, He would have gone down if he would have gone any further because he would have had to bend his back leg and he would have gotten nailed with the right hand, and his legs gave, and so he would have gone down. So by leaning too far back, it's it's the same way Roger Mayweather got knocked out by Rocky Lockridge back in the day. You time it as they come forward, or you time it as they lean back when they either can't go any further, or just as as they turn to try and open up. You you, you it's a timing thing, and that's why you know my my phrase that I'm starting to say a lot is timing is key. Timing beats everything. Timing beats power. Timing beats speed. Because if you time someone, like Jimmy was saying, you let Haney get into a rhythm, he's a hard guy to beat after that because you have to take him out of that rhythm. And when he's set and going in the way he does, and to be honest with you, the only time I've seen him in a really solid rhythm for an entire fight was against Regis Progress, who after the fight said, yeah, I'm thinking of going to M uh, mixed martial arts. So in other words, he was a champion that wasn't even focused on boxing at the time. So a 34-year-old who's hot and cold, has never been consistent, and was doesn't show good boxing skill, uh, lost to a weight bully. That's what we got with Devin Haney being crowned at 140. Um, 
he was being roughed up by featherweights at lightweight. People said it was because of the weight. Now some people are saying, well, you know, he had so much trouble making weight, and Ryan didn't focus on making the weight as much. I, I guarantee you they were within three pounds of each other, not just at the, the day before, but the next day after they both rehydrated. Mm-hmm. Haney looked like a light heavyweight in there. His shoulders were way too broad to be if, anything below 154. So he thought that he was going to get stronger as he moved up. Jimmy's right, no punch. But we already knew that when he went the distance with two featherweights that had a combined eight knockouts and he couldn't floor either one of them. They could eight point. combined eight losses all by knockout. So power rarely gets better as you move up. Only Tommy Hearns that I know of in my lifetime did the power stay consistent from 147 all the way up to 190 even because he knocked out a few cruiserweights right. uh, in his day. He's past his prime, but he did knock out a few cruiserweights. Nobody yeah. else do I know of did their one-punch power stay that consistent as they moved up. And Haney didn't even have it at lightweight. So what makes you think it's going to get any better at junior welterweight where the guys are bigger? A great point, so, man. Haney got exposed. Uh, Jim makes a good point that Ryan didn't look fantastic all the time, but when he let his hands go, he was clearly winning that fight. And Doris said it last night, Haney doesn't have a defense for, uh, against combinations. So <clears throat> he does look to back out really quick, but he also uses his gloves. What he doesn't do is ever move his head. If you throw one shot, he might slip. You throw a couple shots when he's moving, he'll add some head movement into his backwards movement, and he might slip a shot because he's already going away from the shot to begin with. And so you're already reaching for it, therefore he can see it, and it looks like he's really moving out of the way of a punch that wasn't going to land anyway. That's usually the way I, the way I see how he does it. But you throw, you throw three or four punch combinations, especially if you start with one in the mid-frame. Sternum maybe right below the nose or uh, straight in the gut that lands to begin with. And then you piggyback off of it with five or six punch combinations like Loma did. He has no answer because if he does, if you land the first one, he might block the follow-ups. But if you're throwing a barrage at him, his brain shuts down. He doesn't know what to do because if his feet don't get him out of the way, he has no clue what to do because he doesn't move his head. That's a good point. That's a good so, point. Yeah, it's 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 lacking in defense. Well, Dora made the, way, the point last night. I got to give credit where credit's due. Right, right. Uh, uh, before we continue, shout out to uh, Senpai Leo for his contribution with the super chat. He says, "Schizo Ryan with the bussy roll beats everyone from 135 to 154 pounds." <laughs> I don't know about that, Senpai, but hey, man, listen. Uh, he already proved uh, a lot of people wrong with the with the, the win yesterday. So <laughs> you never know. Maybe, maybe he could do that. Um, shout out to Earl Stevens for his contribution to the Super Chat. Earl, who says, Ryan, 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 Ryan. <laughs> Wide rep at coming back from uh, his little break. Uh, Earl Stevens speaking for him. Ryan, Ryan, Ryan. I'm doubling down. Ryan, Ryan, Ryan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> shout out to Hard Recoil for re-extending and re-establishing his membership program. Uh, good to have him on board again. He says, uh, oh, no message, but shout out to Hard Recoil. And then shout out to Earl Stevens again. For his contribution with the super chat, he says, "Ever, ever since, ever since Mayweather's, no, excuse me, every, no, yeah, that's what he meant. Ever since Mayweather's young, ever since the Mayweather, era, young Afro Anglo boxers don't develop an inside game; they just clinch. They are regressing as fighters. Blame it on Floyd. I don't know if I'll go as far as blaming it solely on Floyd, but he, he's." Uh, he does play a large part in that to the point where now we have people saying, "Well, you know, they don't even call it clinching; they call it tying up." Even Timothy Bradley said that one time, not that long ago, in the ESPN telecast. He goes, "Oh, nice tie up." It's like, nice tie up. What, what are you doing? Yeah, uh, you're actually and, admiring it. Nice tie up. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, Sobers. That's what he said. And by the way, I want to hear how Sobers sounds. How's your voice, Sobers, after last night? Oh, I'm, I'm good, bro. I'm good, bro. Let me, let me tell everybody. Shout out, shout out to Ryan. Let's all, let's all, all the brothers in Christ. Let's bow our heads humbly. Because it was all a dream, and God is good, and Eva was defeated yesterday. Ryan knew Amen. that Ryan knew that uh, Devin Haney's not a real Muslim, and he used his love of money, the FBA's greatest weakness, against him, bro. He said, mm. "I'm gonna come in heavy. I'm just here, five hundred thousand per pound. Here, take it, take it." And what did Devin do? He he didn't think twice about it. He said, "Perfect, perfect. Give me exactly. He gave him exactly what he wanted. A new mythical fighter is unlocked. Fully hydrated, Ryan." <laughs> and now we know. Now we know. Look, and like and like uh like Jimmy said, that fight that was an ugly ass fight. We we're not under the impression that uh Ryan Garcia is, you know what I'm saying, this I don't know, like this Jesus figure, right? When he's in the ring. But they try to make us think that Devin Haney was. And you saw right. what happened when he's in there with someone 
a little bit bigger than him with some power. He gets fucking molly whopped. So that's that's a good thing that came out of this fight. And now and, and another thing too, Javante Davis will never rematch him at that weight, bro. No. Oh no, 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 no way. No, if the contract's yeah. even sent Javante's way, he will ignore it and, put, and lie and say it didn't happen. Yeah, that's like, true. He man. will go out of his way to deny the fact that a challenge you could actually get on primetime TV on all major networks and, and issue a absolute offer of major money with a contract in front of God and everybody. And Javante will deny that it happened. That's how far away he will stay from a rematch of that fight. And well, even when it was offered by the, the Sheik, the Sheik fucking said he'd pay for it. Remember? I'll give up the money. Like, so there was that the excuse was out the window. I will pay for it. And what did um fucking Davis say? Fuck you, that 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 fucking dude pisses me off. Yeah, of course he pisses you off. He just exposed you, dude. It's just like he wants nothing. I still would say Haney would beat him because he can't fucking move. He he doesn't have the quickness of hands and the height. That's the major thing. That mm-hmm. height. Because fucking Haney's the first time said somebody like taller than him who could crack. And um you know, so fucking without a doubt, he wouldn't take that fight, and then he would deny. It. But uh, I finish what you were saying. Hey, can I, I say was going to say on that. As far as the real quick though, on on what Haney and, and Tank might do, well, we don't trust uh, Haney's chin. However, what cut at one forty, what helped uh, other than the reef, uh, rehydration clause that helped Tank against Barrios is Barrios reaches in. So he le- he left himself when Tank would lean back, he would reach in and leave his chin exposed. And Ryan, I, I don't know if you guys noticed, even though he may have turned his back. Remember how he used to throw his hook? He used to leave his chin wide up in the air and kind of lean it forward a little bit. He wasn't doing that quite as much. Is the subtle defenses that uh, that one caller says that Ryan makes that are taking time. Um, that the turning the back is obviously a problem that's going to have to go away or he's going to lose to somebody soon. But the, the leaving the chin up in the air, like he used to do that, that's gone away pretty much. So I, I'm not saying he's ever going to be a world beater outside of what happened last night. Uh, my prediction of it being like the Berto uh, Ortiz situation, what happened to Ortiz in his very next fight, this very well could happen to, to Ryan also. Uh, Ryan's oh, got that kind of ego that. where he could blow the load the next time. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it was, it was you who said, "Okay, I was trying to remind, re- remember who's who made the comparison." Yeah, that, that, that was my that was my thing. I said I, that the table is set for this to possibly happen based off of what happened before, of the same situation. Hispanic fighter fights. Well, actually, no, there wasn't. Uh, uh, um, let me take that Hispanic fighter coming back because Maidana was what happened to Ortiz. But right. the you, the young prospect that everyone thought was going to be an heir apparent quit on a fight that was too tough for him. And then he got another big fight, and the next thing you know, he was supposed to be walked through, and he wasn't. He pulled it off. Yeah, huh? And then, but I, now, if the table continues to be set that way, what happened to Ortiz was he had a meltdown against Floyd and never regained any kind of championship status. Well, you have yet to see what happens with Ryan on that. And well, I tell you what's going on with Ryan right now. Narrative after. I tell you what's going on with Ryan right now. He's having the last laugh. Let me tell you. <laughs> calling people out too that's what um but if i get a chance mr bda after the next person or whoever's next i just want to address something go ahead go ahead oh, okay oh you want me to all right i just wanted the the whole cheat thing okay that's all everybody's saying he cheated he cheated all right let's look i, I want to say this without you know sounding like a you know kind of aggressive but you're a fucking stupid asshole if that's oh, what you're saying um, someday just being honest, man, you're stupid asshole. Because what he did was broke a contract. He didn't live up to a contract. Meaning Haney at any time could have said, Nope, I'm fighting Barboza or I'm sorry, whoever was lined up. They had a guy, they always have a spear ready to go. So there's already a guy they pay to go through training camp in case something like this happens. Right? And he could have easily done that. Nope, I'm not doing that. You're coming in three pounds, I'm not doing it. I'm I made my weight. But nope, he was greedy because what he saw was five hundred thousand dollars for every pound. I'm gonna get one point five million dollars out of this. I mean, if that's the number being thrown around, if that's true. So he whoo, put his name yeah. to the contract. He signed a contract to fight that kid at 143 pounds. 
boom, with my lawyer there, your lawyer, we sign this shit. Bing, bang, boom. Nobody cheated, you dumb fucks. No, it happened the only all the one time. Cheated, the other one that cheated last night was Haney. The kidney punches, the rabbit punches, the hitting on the break. Matter of fact, the, the, the hit, holding, the, the holding. The, well, they, they both held. and they Yeah, both, they both held. They when both, Ryan come on, got let's, punished, let's go in my it. opinion... Yeah, the Ryan Garcia. In my was opinion, when Ryan got punished for hitting uh, on the break, the referee, since obviously he couldn't tell you know one fighter from the other what was going on because he was incompetent, um, punished Ryan for Devin being the one that hit on the break three times prior to. Ryan yep. had not hit on the break to that moment at that time, so he was just looking to take a point away from anything. Now, I never became a referee, even though I studied a little bit here and there, so I'm not the the end all be all of rules, but. The what I was told by a professional referee and a professional judge was you usually take a point away not for conduct unbecoming as a whole, but for the inf for the infraction you keep committing. Ryan had not hit on the break prior to that. So if he was taking a, a point away because Ryan was committing multiple little fr infractions, so be it, but that's not common practice. You usually warn them for each one individually unless you're fighting a flagrantly foul, uh, dirty fight, which mm. Ryan was not doing. So he could have taken a point away from hitting behind the head because Ryan was doing that a lot. So And so was Devin. They were both guilty of that. But the kidney punches were only by Devin. The hitting on the break was at the very beginning of the fight. It was, And he hit him in the gut, and Ryan walked away because he thought he was going to get like a, a timeout, and the referee's like, no, 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 no. But Devin did that two more times. Matter of fact, it was late in the fight. He said, I'm not going to warn you again, no hitting on the break. That's fine, but you took a point away from Ryan, who only did it once. So, well, the, can the, I just say, clarify yeah. my position on that based on what you said? Because, yeah, yesterday I was saying, last night when we were doing the calling show, I was saying that, ah, oh, both guys were dirty. But in hindsight, based on what you guys were saying, there was a shift in the latter part of the fight where the referee was allowing Ryan Garcia to do the boosie roll. But then at some point, he allowed Haney to do the uh, you know blatant kidney shots. So yeah, so he did change his tune later on more towards Haney. And, and what I like about the fight yesterday, that the fact that it was so dirty and so sloppy, is that now people are starting to realize what we've been trying to say here f for a long time, which is that enforce the rules. By enforcing the rules, you increase the aesthetic nature, the, aest the pleasing aesthetic nature of a fight. But when you allow guys to mar it, poison it, intoxicate it, with dirty tactics, unbecoming of, of, of good uh, character, then that's what we get. We get an ugly fight. Because can you imagine what would have happened? We don't know. Maybe Ryan Garcia would have been forced to fight without the bussy roll, and he would have maybe caught Ryan, uh, Devin Haney coming in and, and stopped him. Or maybe Devin Haney would have had more success had he not been allowed to clinch either. So I, I, we don't know. But that's the thing. I would have liked to have seen a clean fight, but, and that's up to the referee to enforce the rules, and guess what? He failed. That's why it's up to us, boxing fans, to call it out. If I may add one more thing on the, the dirtiness, uh, uh, that it shows the limit of uh, overrated IQ that Devin has, because all he could think to do was throw at the kidney when his left hand was right in front of Ryan's abdomen the entire time, Flurry away with your hook because those are legal shots and you could have gotten away with that. And the angle was right there for him to give you. And one, your dad never told you to do that. And two, you couldn't see that right in front of you, that you were at a perfect angle not to be hit back. You could throw the hook all day long and flurry it. And it would not have been illegal because you would have been hitting him in the back and you would have been, it, it, the, the art of boxing isn't just hit and not get hit. It's to be in a position where you can't be hit back. So if you're not behind the guy and say you're beside him, right? You're, his shoulder's facing your abdomen. But your front foot is uh, in front of him, if you can picture that. Like when Haney was throwing with... Uh, Haney's left was holding Ryan in place while he's hitting the kidney, right? Instead of holding with the left, all he had to do was just start flurrying that hook towards the abdomen or the head because it was at an angle that was legal. And, and, and Haney did not have the IQ to do that. And his dad didn't tell him that. They're so jab right hand that his hook is an after. It's a it's a slapping afterthought. He doesn't even know how to flurry with it. You like know what? Boyd, that's like now, what Jimmy's. That's Boyd's like what Jimmy said about Boyd's the hook. But the way guys like to flurry with that hook, almost like stirring the pot, is the way someone taught me how to do it back in the day. He doesn't know how to do that. It's not in his IQ at all. It's not in any part of him as a fighter to know how to throw them more than one hook as a throw off, as a check hook or a throw off punch. It's not part of his arsenal at all. He I has see. 
a jab, a right hand, occasionally an uppercut, very little body work, and no no hook as a weapon to set things up. I see. Uh, it was looking like an amateur. Oh, my bad, BD. Yeah, yeah. We got recognized two jumping. Recognize you want to jump in here? Oh, recognize. Uh, what's, up, buddy? Uh, what's going on, gentlemen? Um, no, I just say that. Um, I, I can't, I'll kind of echo like what everybody's been saying. Uh, I'll just add my little like take on it. I, I, I've always said, man, that Devin Haney, Shakur Stevenson, these these type of boxes, even Tank. They're way overrated. I think what happened with Tank is a little different. Uh, I think he stagnated his career with with cherry picking and, and and you know just bad habits outside of the ring and all that shit. I, I think he's more talented than those three guys. Um, even Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia is a little bit it, it, depending on who you talk to, he could be overrated. But at least with him, he he's he's the guy that that you know took the first L right, and it was under. Um, you know, fishy circumstances, in, in my opinion, and a lot of people's opinion, too. Um, so I always felt like, look, man, if he comes to win this fight, he he can he beats Devin Haney because there was no doubt in my mind and a lot of other people's mind. It's because what does Devin Haney bring to the table outside of, you know, gaining a whole lot of fucking weight, muscle weight uh, on top of that after a weigh-in? He doesn't really bring anything. He doesn't have punching power. Look, punching power in the game of punching, that is something you need, bro. You need something to that that can that can slow down the danger you're about to be in. Okay. Uh, certainly, there was some times <clears throat> in the fight that Ryan Garcia probably said, <clears throat> "Excuse me," that Ryan Garcia said, "Um." You know, I'm in. I'm in a little bit of a a, a rut over here. You know, because that's how that's how fights play out when you fight twelve rounds. But he always had the power factor that could land and could and could get him out of that situation. Devin Haney never has that. Okay, to me, Devin Haney was on. It was in the game because he was allowed to break the rules of boxing. He initiated the clinching. I think if he doesn't clinch, Ryan Garcia doesn't clinch. Hmm. That's it. That's, that's as easy as that. Ryan Garcia wouldn't clinch. He might have held, like if he got in trouble, but he would have not been clinching with him. He gave him a piece of his own medicine, right? Because he was fully hydrated. You guys talked about this. How he <clears throat> he came out. He came in three pounds overweight. He paid the fine. I think fight night he was. Uh, I think if anybody weighed more, it was fucking Haney. That's what it looked like to me. Um, but they were at least probably the same weight. All right, give or take. And he can't he you know, he just came to win the fucking fight. And the and he dealt with the situation that was at hand. All right, the referee's letting him hold. I'm gonna hold too. You know, I'm gonna hold too. I'm gonna put myself in this situation where, you know, I know what he's trying to do. He's trying to wear me out with the clinching and and, and, and the excessive holding. And so I'm gonna do it too. So I could catch my breath. I could I could take some 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 seconds off the clock and get a spurt of energy and just catch this dude when he's a little tired because I know he can't handle my punches. You know? And I'll reiterate this. That seventh round when he took a point away from him. He took a point away from him because he dropped him bad too. All right. When he was coming up, his arm got stiff armed. He got that stiff arm when you when you when you kind of lose, you know. Uh, you 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 lose the, uh, the 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 electrolytes in your head when you get punched really hard, right? That's why he Motor froze. Skills. Yeah, that's why that's why he froze and, and his his arm went stiff arm because he almost he almost he almost couldn't make it up. And the referee then, you know, sees these, the, this clinching initiated by Haney, like he did in the first round, right when he got clipped with that with with, with that lead left hook. He did the same thing. And what does the referee do? Because, you know, he, here's Haney fucking keep holding him and putting his, his glove in his face and his throat. He throws a little punch. Never warned him about it. Point deduction. Okay? Buying him time. Saving him a little bit on the scorecard for making it worse. And, you know, the plan still didn't work out because Devin Haney is not that good. Think about, you know, this is the way I think about it. 
the referee was in favor of Devin Haney in that fight. Okay, he was letting him get away with a lot of you know with a lot of uh, dirty tactics, breaking the rules. And at the end of the day, still couldn't. The only thing that it more likely saved him from was getting knocked out, getting stopped. That's Devin Haney in a nutshell. Let me read a super chat here real quick, or two super chats. Uh, shout out to Bray for his contribution with the super chat. He says, Lomachenko reparations, alhamdulillah. Well, I mean, listen, some people are, are saying hashtag karma. Uh, I suppose there might be something to it. Shout out to Bray. Um, shout out to Chris K for his contribution with the super chat. He says, any theories on why Haney seemed reckless with defense? He seems so much less technical than usual. Haney's chin might be even worse moving forward. Um, I mean, it's not... Uh, a, a secret here would happen or, 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 a, you know, I can give a little bit of a take. It's not a complicated equation. It's, it's Haney. We got like, like, uh, uh recognized. And, uh, Jimmy said he got hurt early on, sort of rattled his marbles early. And also reckless with defense. He's never really been, like I said, a defensive wizard. And here's the other thing I liked about Ryan Garcia. I hated the clinching from both guys. I heard that the sloppy part of that fight, but I'm, again, like I said, I'm glad it happened. So now people are finally paying attention to how that can more a fight. But the interesting thing was also how Ryan Garcia started giving Haney a taste of his own medicine by moving around the ring. And there was a point where he was moving, 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 and Haney leapt in with a left hook. It wasn't quite a gazelle hook, but it was, you know, like a leaping left hook. And Ryan Garcia just weaved under it and spun him around, and Haney looked awful. See, that's what happens with these guys that are finally given a taste of their own medicine and fights, guys start fighting in a negative fashion, meaning avoiding contact, avoiding combat. They don't know what to do. It happened to Jerron Ennis too. You know, you you have these media members and fans saying, oh, this guy can do it all. He can fight inside, outside, mid-range. Okay, maybe you can fight on the inside, but can you get on the inside? That's a, a skill in and of itself. And most of these guys, they can pull it off. That's why when somebody gives them a taste of their own medicine, they start looking awful because they're not, they're unaccustomed to having to close the distance, cut the ring off, and really get in there and work their way to the inside or on the inside. Yeah, he only threw 26 punches around on average, I think. That's that's like heavyweight numbers. That's I mean, crazy. you know, I'm telling you, when was he when did he have to chase somebody? When he fought Santiago, who was a tall guy, he didn't have to go for him. Uh, he did try to go after Linares in certain spots and then he got hurt and that's what ended it for him. He never really tried to go after Cambosos all that much except in the rematch because that's why that's because Cambosos went to him like a maniac and got softened up in that 11th round I believe it was 10th or 11th round and that's when Haney tried to put him out and he couldn't even put him down. So again I reiterate the point. A much shorter is on guy the with short arms too. Yeah. I, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna I, I'm gonna um echo something that Jimmy said before the fight happened, and I was talking to BDA about this last night. Um, Jimmy said, look, with everything that's going on, I'm picking Haney, but he said, he said, it would be really interesting to see if Ryan Garcia clips this dude, and he clips him early, early in the fight. He says, I think that could be a total game changer, and that's exactly what happened. Remember that little Thank video you, clip I sent you, um, uh, BDA last night? Mm -hmm. That video clip is of the first round, and you can see that's exactly what happened. It played out exactly uh, the scenario that Jimmy brought up, and he was never in it. Like, pretty, he was just basically trying to survive. He's a front runner. Yeah, exactly, brother. Once you hurt him, and you get he because it's. It's so mental with him because he's not a fighter. So being just an athletic boxer, he has to get into that rhythm. Stick, move to the left, not to his right, like in the BDA, uh, rightfully point out, and move, move, stick, move, stick, move. Don't go in there. He, he was hurt. So he didn't have, when you're hurt like that and you stay hurt, like it's, it's almost like being drunk. You almost got like yep. a sensation of being drunk. Your fucking legs weigh a lot. You're like, you're not confident on bouncing around. And because of the slapping fucking Garcia in the face, Garcia punking him. And he knew everybody thought Garcia was getting all fucked up and didn't take this shit serious. And he really wanted to knock him out. And he really thought he could. I mean, that's what his father kept saying on all those channels they were going to do to him. And uh, Garcia fucking took his shots. He got wobbled there a little bit because he got caught real clean. And he didn't see the, the punch coming. It was that leaping left that Garcia didn't see coming. And... uh 
I just know. I thought, uh, listen, Garcia's a fucking... And to think about this, this makes it even worse for him. Garcia wasn't in shape. That was not good lung shape. And you still got fucking beat up by him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I want to say, too, real quick, the headbutting. I'm not letting him get off the hook with that. Not only was fucking Haney diving in, but he was coming up with his head under his chin. Yes. Yep. Where was yep. Yeah, where was yeah. Garcia's corner on that? How could, they should have been, when you're fucking, bang, the bell rings. Derek James should have been through them ropes, keeping one foot out in case he gets try to DQ him on it. At least one foot out and screaming, what the fuck, dude? He's coming up with his head. And I just also want real quick too on a hitting on the fucking the break. That's a if it's that's considered a flagrant foul. That's no, you don't get a warning for that. You're supposed to get a point taken, but it wasn't a flagrant. It was a it, he didn't try to hurt him. It was a fucking like slap him in the face. It was a right. it was a punk one. So that yeah, he could have warned him. Cut that clean, shit right? out. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, keep it clean with that bullshit yeah. because he it wasn't a who trying to fucking put him out. It was fuck you slap. So yes. It, you're not supposed to get a warning on a fucking hit on a break. That's an automatic point deduct. If it's flagrant, that was disrespectful. So I want to just add that. My my brother, oh, my brother was telling me he was watching the fucking fight. He's all he's all he's all jacked up and shit. He <laughs> said, "Yo, he beat <laughs> Ryan Garcia beat him up like that's his little brother." <laughs> For oh, real, bro. He said he, he always knew he could beat him up. Like, you know, like he hugged him at the, as soon as the, the bell rang, you know, he celebrated a little bit. He hugged him. He's like, you know, like, hey, listen, man, you're my little bro. You fought back. I give you credit. Like that kind of shit. Like, yeah. Yep. There was never a shock look on Garcia. Nothing. It was never like super out of, like out of control, excited when he heard him. It's like, bro, I know I could do that to you. I don't think. What the fuck is that? I don't think about this shit. When it comes to you, I know I could hurt you at any time. I just you want to know? remind people. So, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, that's it. That's basically it. It's like the, 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 the fight. The fight played out the way Garcia knew it was going to be. Now, the, the the holding and the referee acting the way you know nobody really knows. You could you could have an idea that something like that might happen, but you know you don't know how it's going to play out. But everything Garcia did, he knew he would, he could do this to 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 Haney. There was no shock in 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 him at all. And look, uh, to add to what you're saying, recognize how he little brothered him. Even when Haney landed that shot that he shook up Ryan, Ryan kind of um he egged him in, like he waved him in, like come on, let's go. And Haney didn't he didn't push forward because he knows That's better. That's true. Huh? And then in he that last better. round, in that last round, when uh, Ryan started styling on him, he started getting the little shoulder shake, the little shimmy shimmy. So he started licking his pussy. He started licking his pussy and shit like ah. <laughs> and he didn't know. With all that clowning, with all that clowning, sobers, I still thought he won that round. That's what I'm saying, bro. And Haney didn't go for that round too. You know what's interesting about that is, again, these guys are not used to having to go chase a fight. You know, go really go get it. Um, I do want to say something about that is Ryan Garcia, you know, Jimmy mentioned that, uh, that Ryan, he feels like Ryan Garcia wasn't in optimal shape. I got to reiterate that point too, man. Haney, people were making him out to be, especially his father. Now, of course, his father and the you know, promoters and all that, they have to say that. That's what they do. You have to overhype your fighter a little bit. But his fans too were to ma making it out to be as Haney beat, look at the resume of Haney, Linares, Jojo Diaz, Lomachenko, which of course we all know what happened there. How how couldn't he beat a guy who's essentially a one arm puncher in Ryan Garcia? You couldn't beat a crazy inter Instagram star. You couldn't do that if you're if you're this genius. That's why I, I I hate to say it, man. But when we say when we criticize a fighter and we say, look, hold your horses, he's not all that. Look at his flaws, and then we point him out. Instead of people saying, uh, uh, you know, addressing those points, they'll go, man, you hating. Why are you hating? And it's the same thing with Tank Davis because we're going to have to get to him as well. Tank Davis is not all that. People keep saying now, now I hear people saying, oh man, that Garcia win is aging gracefully. May I remind people? Oh, yeah. May sure I remind is. people? Sure may I remind sure people? Is. May I remind people that this is what Gervonta Davis said before the, the, the Garcia fight about the rehydration clause. I'm just making sure everything's fair. You know what I mean? I know that Ryan Garcia is a bigger fighter. He already has the advantage of the height, the size, the arm length, like everything. He has the most advantage. So I'm just making it a little fair. Everyone's done it before. It's part of boxing. So everyone's done it before. Apparently, everyone's done it. Every every single boxer in, 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 in the sport has done it. But second of all, 
I don't want to hear the Tank Davis fans saying, oh, he would have done this or that to Haney because they didn't want him to fight Haney without a rehydration clause. So if you're not going to fight the guy yep. at his best, I, I don't want to hear the, this mythical I don't uh, see you taking fight credit him. for that. Yeah, look. Exactly. And, and maybe they shouldn't fight. Maybe a Garcia is in a different weight class than, than Tank. That's fine. But what I don't want to see is a weaker version. This is, this is, bro, this is fighting. You never should give anything of yourself up if you, I mean, if you're coming to win, right? So if, if you're, you're, you got the competitive spirit, I would always advise, I'd be like, bro, the guy you're fighting could punch hard. And then on top of that, you're going to come in a little weak. That's a bad combination. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's, a, mm -hmm. that's just not a combination of winning. We see now. When Garcia is fully hydrated, when he's full, he's beatable. Don't get me wrong, he's beatable, but you got to have power to beat Garcia. You can't. He never feared Devin Haney's punches. Never. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, of course he but, plays but, defense. You're supposed to. Let's not forget he did. He did. Right, he did. Haney did stun him with a left hook in the what was the third, fourth round. Okay, so yep. think about that punch. Think about that punch. It's a punch that he caught. Uh, you know, kudos to kudos to Devin Haney. That's what you're supposed to do. You catch your man off guard, right? Those are the punches that not. It didn't do nothing. It didn't knock him out. Now, when Garcia clipped him with something that he didn't see coming, that's your fear as a boxer. Me getting hit with a punch, I I don't see coming. What he was all over the place. So we saw Garcia get clipped with something. That was the I think it was the. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Was that the third or the fourth round where Haney clips him? Okay, I think it was the so, like, so, yeah. third. I think. Okay, so think about it. So you're already you're already exerting energy, and he catches you with a punch off guard, and that's all you could do. Okay, I'm good with that. Because I know mm, when I hit yeah. you, I got you dancing. I got you holding. I got you looking and making the ugly face, you know? But you and recognize, I, I, yeah. that's what makes it all the more frustrating is that Haney, if he punched properly, he does have, he has the size and he has the speed to catch guys with punches that they don't see coming and hurt them. But like we, you guys have been saying, he doesn't have the wherewithal, the mental capacity to do it. Absolutely. He don't. And what's up? Dude. How big was he in that fuck? I mean, I know everybody keeps talking about Garcia. Garcia's like he has a longer body than 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 uh you know a longer torso than than this kid uh Haney. But Haney looked like a fucking brick house in there. He looked like a almost like a a bodybuilder. Yeah, how yeah, much that, that's a, no, but that's a lot. That's where rehydration size, which is important, clearly, right? Yes. Uh, now, here's the other thing. Can I thing ask y'all something? That sure. I would say, um, look, I'm right here looking on different uh, multiple sites, pound for pound lists, and I'm seeing um, a name consistently pop up like around six, like five to eight, and it's Devin Haney. So now that he just got his ass whooped, like that was a, <laughs> I don't, I don't, it, wasn't a it wasn't that bad of a Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford ass whooping, bro, but it was a, like a Maidana Broner ass whooping, right? He got a bra joke, he got his jaw broken and everything. Yeah. Anyway, does, do we drop Haney? Does Haney drop off the list, and does Ryan take his spot? On, uh, is Ryan pound for pound now? Was Devin Haney? Is Devin Haney still pound for pound? Like, what's going on? What What are these? Um, yeah, what are yes, supposed to. Know, this yes. is where consistency's got to be. Is it's got to be called out if you're not doing it right? Like, look, at least for me, right? I, I'm not gonna speak for the, the panel. I never had Devin Haney as a top pound for pound fighter. Exactly. You understand what I'm saying? I, I never had him. But if you're one of these guys that had him at whatever, 10, 5, 6, then what are you saying about Garcia? Or were you just all wrong? Because you, now you don't want to bump up Garcia. You know what I'm saying? So if you don't want to bump up Garcia, then you were definitely wrong about your boy Haney. That's a good you point. Know? Dead wrong. Dead and you wrong. know what? Yep. And, but I, but I, you want me to finish what I was saying, Mr. BDA? Do you want to go? Yes, to Jimmy. You go ahead, man, please. Okay, I was going to say, um, but we, I don't want to underscore, I mean, or blind the, the, what's going on with that three pounds. That's a huge, huge thing. Like the fact that, we, that, that Haney, in some cases, kind of almost looked wider, maybe more muscular. 
he still went down to 140. I'm not saying it, it, it's not wrong with that because he signed a contract, but that's mm -hmm. a big deal. Like those, that's the reason why Ryan didn't want to do it anymore. Because you got to think about it. He's 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 eating muscle. Like to be able to walk around like be so hungry, you want to fucking eat your arm. You're angry at everybody. You're listless. Yeah, and that goes yeah. on for day after day, right? And then you're fucking. And at that point, you're not losing fat. Your muscle, you. Like you've already gone way past having great abs. Now you're literally eating your muscle where you're getting pounding headaches. It's miserable. And fucking, you know, he said, I ain't doing it. I'll pay the money and I ain't doing it. And kudos on him. That was a game plan he had. But it goes to show you Tank dragging that kid down to 136 pounds knew exactly what the fuck he was doing. Also want to say props to fucking Golden Boy putting that fight in New York. If they had that fight in Vegas, no questions asked. No that's questions a good asked point. in my mind. They, that's a good they would have fucking, fucking given Haney. Yep. Yeah. I just want to throw that out there, boys. I'm wondering now, right? Because I was like, wait a second. You got these two uh, kids from the West Coast. They're both from California. One from Northern. The other one from Southern. Why not have that shit in Cali or, or, or Vegas? But now, that's, now that, you, that you said that, yeah, that makes a good point. Because maybe if the fight is in Vegas... Yeah, maybe they still take it from him. Who knows? They, 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 they well, take it Oscar from... saw what they did to Loma, remember? Yeah. Oscar said Loma won. He saw what they did to Loma, and he's like, fuck this Vegas. How many times do we have to see this? The American fighter getting the win they didn't deserve. So he sent him out to New York, even though Max DeLuca tried giving it a fucking, you know. Uh... And New York is a different dynamic in terms in terms of like the him. crowd. The, the crowd, right? So when they're not invested, they're looking to to cheer for someone. Like you know, it's just it's just one of these neutral places, right? Where it's like, yeah. all, right, all right, both of these boys are from California. You know, you know, we're not really, you know, we're not really invested. We will just see who who's 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 the one that's really coming out there. And then they see Ryan. They don't got the pressure. The, they don't got the pressure of the sanction body. That's where the pressure exactly. comes. Exactly. Who they, they want to win. Yep. Exactly. So they just see the fight and they're going with the flow. They're like, all right, man, look at the crowd. The crowd's the crowd's on Garcia's side. You know? That's a great point. You guys are yeah. That's a great point think, you guys are No I'm sorry, Mr. BDA. I think Solbers wanted to say something as well. Yeah. I was gonna say, I think um I'm really happy that Ryan did that. Honestly, when I heard that he was blowing the weight and he's saying, Yeah, 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 whatever, I don't care. That's when I really thought like, oh, he might win because he's actually using his head. Mm. You know what I mean? He's going to try to weight bully the weight bully. And um, he pulled the old <laughs> Guatemalan <laughs> switcheroo. He pulled the old <laughs> Guatemalan <laughs> switcheroo, BDA. It's, it's a Guatemalan snatch away. <laughs> no, it's the Guatemalan there. snatch away. When we were doing the, when we were doing the, uh, the countdown earlier uh, yesterday, and we were speaking to, I forget who we were speaking to. Uh, Damn it. We were speaking to someone on the panel that calls, he calls in a lot. Uh, I think he even has a channel. Um, Julio. My bad for forgetting his name, man. But we were talking, right? Mm -hmm. We were, we were, we were talking about the, the, the missed weight and everything. And I think like me and him were talking in, in, in the panel. And we were like, we, we agreed like, yo, God, God, that must mean that Garcia's coming to win the, or he was making the point that he felt that to him, that meant Garcia is more likely coming to win the fight or at least to hurt him, you know, try to knock him out. Maybe not win on points, just go for the knockout. Not that it was going to guarantee him the victory, but at least that 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 was something to look forward to. And that's what that's what exactly what he did, bro. He came in there to spark this dude out, knock him out. You know, for, forget the uh And Mr. BDA did Well, didn't guys, didn't he say coming into this that the belts don't matter? And if he did say that coming into this fight, like I think he did, doesn't he that did. say that this must have been a plan? Because he was laying it already down. Ah, this transcends the belts or whatever he said. Who gives a shit about the belts? So he knew if he was going to miss his weight, he wasn't going to get a belt. Hey, <laughs> before really we get down to, to that, can I just say game? real quick, uh, make sure that people hit the like, hit the like, hit the like, hit the like. It really helps us out. It only takes two seconds to do, guys. So please make sure to do that. It costs nothing but two seconds. And in regards to the, the 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 weight, yeah, maybe maybe he planned it all along, or, or I don't know. It's difficult to say at this point. But I will say that you know Kevin from Chicago was saying that in good conscience, even though he was happy that uh, Garcia won, he couldn't condone uh, the, the 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 missing the weight. And I I agree with him, but it does show you that this is what it takes for some people to wake up. I'm not talking about K Dog. I'm talking about other people because. 
that's why we always hear, like for example, with, when uh, Garcia took that fight against uh, Tank Davis, and people say, "Oh no, well he can't use the rehydration clause as an excuse because he agreed to it." Almost as if by agreeing to it, it, it erases the fact that he actually had to dehydrate himself to do that. That's what they say. Uh, or when a guy, you know, Lomachenko, when he fights Salido, and Salido blows the weight, and then low blows him constantly throughout the fight, and even then it's still a close fight. But again, people shade on Lomachenko for that. They don't they don't keep the same energy yep. for that. So now when it happens to their exactly. guy, now all of a sudden they wow, we gotta question it, blah blah. Nah, man. Look, he agreed to it, Haney agreed to it, no excuses. Like like Jimmy said, he could have said, fuck it, right. give me Barboza or or you know, force him to try to make weight again, you know, a second time or third time, whatever it takes. But he didn't. So again, I don't condone missing weight, but now it's happening to the the you know the the A side as it were, even though I know Garcia got the share of the money, but in terms of the establishment, Haney was the guy that was being pushed by the media, and therefore I call him the A side. And now that it happened to him, all of a sudden, but I'm, I'm glad to see that some people are keeping it consistent. They're going, well, we always defended Haney well, being a, a weight bully, so now we can't call Ryan Garcia out, or maybe I should, I, I don't know. But but the other well, thing when, I to, when Giovanni Davis, uh -huh. I was say when Davis did it right when he manipulated the weight, it was sportsmanship. <laughs> Good sportsmanship. <laughs> when fucking Garcia manipulates the weight, it's cheating. Like, well, yeah, people, I, mean, I got you. Care. I got you where you're coming from. But, but let me, not, let me... You know what it is? They lack awareness, man. <laughs> they just do. It's like, dude, do you have any self-awareness? Oh. Do you understand that you are not contradicting me. what Terrible. you're saying? Oh, do, you know, do you even know the words that are coming out of my mouth? Do you even understand what I'm saying at this point? Because... I wonder if you if and you and I'm talking about the people who call into this show said that. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, no, hundred percent, uh uh Jimmy. The people that, yeah. that were calling, and I'm not talking about K Dog, uh, uh Kevin from Chicago. I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about the people that that oh he agreed <clears throat> to the to the to the to the um catch weight rehydration clause with Garcia and, and Tank. Oh um he he still took the fight in, in Lomachenko when uh, when when Solito uh, blew weight by like four pounds, you know what I'm saying, and 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 you know, kudos to Loma. Loma said, "I still fight this dude, right? Because I have a chance to win the belt." And um, and and countless others, you were okay with that, but now that it happened to Haney, now oh he cheated, <laughs> bro. You're the same guy. You should never, like, you should be careful, at least be aware of what you were saying before that. Yeah, that's, that's and, true. And like, it that's wasn't why I keep even saying. an option for Garcia. It wasn't like it was a part of the contract. It wasn't like um, they sat down for negotiations and for the contract and said, iron and out and saying, okay, and oh, by the way, can you do this at 136? No, listen, that was a jumping off point. They said, if the fight doesn't happen at 136, there's no fight. There was no option there. He said, I will fight you, but it will only be at 136. And then they sat down, did the contracts, everything else. So there wasn't like there was even an option for the kid. If you wanted to fight me, I'm going to drag you down to your initiated. Same right. shit that happened to Pedraza. Yeah, and, and uh -huh. I got to tell you. No, no, Pedraza was champion, but he should have left. Well, I got to tell you, uh, somebody posted that um, on Twitter earlier. Hold on, where is it? Yeah, somebody... Uh, uh, J J M M J M M A four. He said Ryan Garcia's body versus Devin Haney, and this is and then on the right, uh, Ryan Garcia against Tank Davis. Now obviously I think there's been some sort of work with the contrast there, and obviously one uh, the one on the left you can see Garcia's closer to the frame. He's occupying more of the frame, so it looks bigger. But the point is, uh, he did you know Tank Davis didn't dehydrate Ryan Garcia for the fun of it for sh shits and giggles. He did it because he knew. It was going to have an, a noxious negative effect on Ryan Garcia. But may I also say that, again, people were making fun of Garcia for losing. And that's, again, that we've been talking about this for a while on this show, about how loss doesn't define you as a boxer unless you let it. And that goes for the same thing in life, outside the ring. Uh, you know, sometimes a hardship can create some sort of form of chrysalis or, or a transfiguration. You know, there's there's something in, in biology I just recently learned about called apoptosis which is when the, the, the certain cells die and it's a normal process within the the, the the you know the anatomy 
so that the organism can grow and develop. And it seems like it's the same thing that, that everyone's always been saying in podcasts, self-help books and all that is yeah, you need hardship in life. And that's what happened with Ryan Garcia. He yeah. learned that he shouldn't be giving away these weight advantages and contractual stipulations and all that. That's, that's not really, you know, and if they're going to do it to you, then you should play the game as well. I mean, Lomachenko too, after he lost to Haney, they try to offer, you know, Shakur Simons was like, hey, now it's my turn. And Lomachenko said, fuck that. I don't want to fight another A-side who I know the establishment is trying to push so he can punch me in the balls for all 12 rounds and then I don't get the decision. He said, fuck it. I, I'm, I'm out of here. Take, took a year break. So sometimes yeah. you have to play the game dirty as well. I, I wouldn't blame a guy like Loma if they're like, yo, we want you to fight Shakur Stevenson. Fuck you, because I don't have a chance of winning the fight on the scorecard. I have to do way more than he does. And then on top of that, he's going to break the rules. Then on top of that, he's going to come in super goddamn huge. Okay, I'm okay with that, but at least give me a fucking chance to win the fight. Like, I don't have to fucking stop him or destroy him for fucking 12 rounds. You know, because that's asking for a lot. I don't care how good of a fighter is. So you have to do more in order to win against your opponent. All your opponent has to do is just survive. Come on, bro. Why would I? Why, why? Why would you keep taking that deal? Like I understand you're good. You're really good. Um, and 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 but you're aging. You're smaller. You know you got all those things uh, uh, going against you. And the guy, the guy understands that all he's got to do is survive. Yeah, that's a great point. And there's a crucial thing about Tank. I want to add too. Remember, guys. He already went up to 140 and fought Barrios. So that's, that's a huge rub in it. He already went up and fought at 140. So he had no problem going up there and doing that, right? In fact, it's still talk. That's where he's going to go. But he wouldn't do it against Ryan. No, nah, no, nah, no way, dude. You're too big. Come down and drag you down to 136. So the fact that he would do it and then just punked out, that's a punk move. He, re he purposely, re you know, the kid was still kind of a prospect. Right. So fuck to see them on Twitter right now going crazy like that solidifies Davis is the best in that in and around that weight class. Get the fuck out of here with that. I would argue, Jimmy. I would argue, Jimmy, that in that time that Ryan Garcia has lost that fight and now he's already um, he's already surpassed that. He's already erased that loss to Davis. He's been a better opponent while Davis has yet to fight anybody else and capitalize on the clout he got off of beating Ryan Garcia. You know what I mean? Yep. And listen, guys, I want to say something real quick. When you lose muscle, one of the hardest areas of your body, like any bodybuilder will tell you to gain thickness is in your abs and obliques. Jimmy, you're cutting off, man, I think. You're, you're cutting off, Jimmy. Nate, when you stop. Jimmy, you're cutting off. Oh, shit. Okay, I want it. Okay, sorry. My... All right, let me hang up and call back. Yeah, please. Hello? Uh, well, yep, hang up first. Right. Yeah, hang up and then come back. There we go. All right, we'll wait for Jimmy to return. I want to hear what he has to say about that, about the, the muscle loss. Oh, he's back. All right, Jimmy, go ahead, man. Okay. I'm back. Jimmy. <laughs> she was, <worse>, though. <laughs> ah, fuck. I think we're having connection. <laughs> I think we're having yeah. connection. Yeah, with Jimmy there. Hey, but don't forget to hit the like, fellas. Hit the like, hit the like, hit the like. It really helps us out. It takes two seconds out of your, your time to do, I mean, of your, of your schedule. Right. So don't be afraid, man, to yeah, hit the like. Man. It's, it's, don't be afraid like, like, uh, like some of these guys who are afraid to throw jabs and fully commit to it. No, no, no. You got to step into that shotgun jab, baby. Let's go. Um, real quick, shout out before Jimmy comes back. Uh, shout out to Starboy5 for his contribution to the Super Chat. He says, um, this fight don't need a rematch. I had Haney, had Haney won, he would have moved on to another fight regardless had it been close. Ganey got owned and exposed bad. All right, shout out to Starboy5. I, I, I agree with that. I think Haney didn't even want a rematch. I think he said that. I could yeah. be wrong. Um, before the fight, rather. Maybe not. Um, shout out to Chris K. Yeah, he does one now. Uh, shout out to Chris K for his contribution to Super Chat. He says, you guys are too harsh on Haney. Could you resist holding a beautiful man like Ryan Garcia? <laughs> If he can tighten up his left foot, <laughs> that would be okay, even man. deadlier. Well, I mean, I don't know about the tight. I mean, the I don't know about the the you know resisting holding on to him. But if he could tighten up that that um, jab, you could be right. Every, everything's got to be tight in boxing, every man. Every muscle must. Every muscle must be tight. That's right. Every muscle must be tight. Let me play that every again. Every muscle must be tight. <laughs> tight, tight, tight. Yeah. There can you go. hear me now, Mister BDA? Absolutely, tight. Jimmy. Please, yes. 
All right, brother. No, what I was going to say, I'll make it real quick. When you lose that weight, dragging those extra four pounds, so we already know, actually, it was, yeah, four pounds past 140, He's he was probably starting to eat muscle around 147, right, like really eating muscle. Another 10 pounds muscle, I'll tell you what went, was those abs. They were hmm. thin as paper tissue. So, of course, it'd be fucking more recept- acceptable to a fucking body shot. And you know that. When you initiate a fighter, yes. that's where you want to go, his body. As his abdominal muscles shrink. Yep. The reason why Mickey could take such a nasty body shot, his abs were like two fucking inches thick. Yep. Hey, can, can I say so something I about that? that out. That's strategic what they did. Jimmy, to okay. your point, because people keep saying Tank is that guy, you know, oh, Tank Davis's win over Herr Garcia is, is, is aging well. Let's, let's recapitulate what he had to do. Catch weight, rehydration clause, late weigh-in, late weigh-in. They extended, instead of being early in the morning, they did it way later. Because uh, nowadays they you do it in the morning. But this time they decided, oh, no, let's go with it later. He had a mole in Garcia's camp. I mean, just a whole bunch of things to beat an Instagram star. And then he admitted, well, no, it's, you know, it's just, he's got too many advantages. Well, I mean, I'm sorry. Listen, I got to say, just like we were telling you that Devin Haney wasn't as good as the media was making him out to be and certain fans were making him out to be. Same thing with Tank Davis, which we've been saying for a long time either. He, there's a lot of asterisks to his wins. He's being guided carefully. That's why he won't fight outside of the PBC, save for Ryan Garcia. Yeah. And look at what he had to do to Ryan Garcia. And don't, please don't give me the Mario Barrios win because that was another fight that had another rehydration clause in there. So... Right, yes, I was gonna say I, that. Didn't that one? Didn't it come out? That one had a rehydration clause too. Yeah. And you so just, look, you just confirmed that. Yeah. Tank, Tank Davis is a good Media, fighter. Real quick. Tank Davis is a good fighter, but he's not Mayweather with power. That's all I want to say. BDA, real quick. Um, there was a fight where uh, it wasn't a catchweight, but it was the cruiserweight had became a new division. At this might have happened like in the eighties, early eighties. And it was a fight between Dwight Muhammad Kawi versus uh, Leon Spinks, right? Mm. Uh, Michael Spinks' brother, uh, his, his older brother. And so Leon Spinks was a heavyweight. Yeah. So the weight class was 190 or 195. It was one of those two, right? So, Le- so Leon wanted to see if he could do it, right? So he cuts this weight. I think at this point of his career, he was a, he was a man walking around probably around 230 you know 230 pounds so think about the timing like the 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 technology for for weight loss and all that shit wasn't that as advanced as it is today um so he takes that fight go look at that fight he can't move he gets beat the fuck up by a guy who's five foot seven and i think leon speaks was like six two six three somewhere around there right he literally can't fucking move around the ring after the fight right they were like they, they spoke he's like man i just i guess i can't fight at that weight that's basically it you know i couldn't fucking move and he got beat the living daylights out of you know in that fight to the to just stop the fight so my point of bringing that up is dude like weight um especially when you're taking somebody uh down in weight that's a guy who's losing strength so you're definitely not fighting the best version of that guy if you think that you're 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 dishonest as fuck bro you're just so dishonest that's not fighting a guy his best that's why it's called pound for pound pound for pound means i fight you at your best right we saw it with pacquiao and uh margarito uh pacquiao was like okay listen let's fight at 150 you've been fighting at 147 pounds right uh your whole career let's fight at 150 you can gain as much weight as you want i think fucking margarito came in at 170 and little pacquiao came in at 150 fight night right yeah. so a guy 20 pounds that's a pound for pound guy he's saying come in at your best okay. even though i think at that point you know margarito might have been on the downside of his career but still hell in term in terms of health wise you come in at your best and I'm gonna come in what what I think is best. He didn't complain about the weight. He was bro. He was down. He's down by 20 pounds. Come fight night, and like five or six inches in height. <laughs> That's a powerful pound, dude. Not somebody like Tank draining you. Then on top of that, slapping a fucking rehydrate. No, that's the opposite of pound for pound. I just want to say too that. 
you know, you make some good points there, recognize. Um, but but I also wanted to say this. You guys mentioned something interesting. You said, uh, yeah. you, some of you said yesterday, ah, oh, the fight should have been stopped. The fight should have been stopped. Can I just say that I'm glad it didn't get stopped because first of all, they gave Devin Haney the benefit of the doubt. He went the 12 rounds, the distance. But also, I want to see guys take punishment. I, I, I know you guys didn't say, oh, they should have stopped it for the sakes of Haney. You guys were saying, like, based on the fact that some of those knockdowns were about five or should have been five or seven knockdowns. But but my thing is that I want to see this level of violence. I'm sorry, man. It's it's professional boxing for me. It's not amateur boxing where, oh, if a guy gets stunned a little bit, oh, they stop the fight, they wave it off. Nah, oh, man, I wanted to see Haney and, and Garcia beat each other up. And I think it's it's uh, that's what that's what boxing needs more of. And especially the good news is that I just heard that uh, the day before yesterday, I forget who posted on Discord. Somebody posted a, a tweet from Turkey Alashid or whatever his name is, His Excellency, who he says that he will now be working with the PBC. So imagine that they got Eddie Hearn, they got other promoters on board, and now the PBC stable to make the fights. So they're cutting through the red tape. And let me tell you, if they enforce the rules and they make the best fights and if, uh, make the best fight the best, holy smokes, boxing is going to be back. It won't be back to what it was in the golden era in the 1940s when it was the, the number It'll one It'll get sport. close to it. I mean, It'll get close better, than, to it. better than when it's been the last couple of years. Now, I also want to say real quick uh, that, again, guys all of a sudden changing their, their tune. Again, when this is what Michael Benson just posted yesterday, or I think today. Devin Haney has fought Jorge Linares, Jojo Diaz, George Cambosos twice, Lomachenko, Regis Program, and Ryan Garcia. Undisputed and a two-way champion at age 25, fighting the best with just one defeat on his record. Nothing to be ashamed of. Now, let me just say this. Let me just say this. Oh, you going to put the nuts in your mouth too? That's double bonus, man. I mean, I don't know. I, I never saw him say that. <laughs> for, for, God damn, man. I never heard him say that for, for Lomachenko, for example, or any, any other fighter who's lost. Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I have to dig deep into his Twitter. But why? Why? what's this obsession with certain fights, you know, pr protecting and, and defending certain fighters? Like, come on, guys. It's not that bad. It's only one loss. <laughs> but with other fighters, it's like they, they don't say that. I don't know, guys. Well, what do you think? Am I misreading here the, the situation? Same. It's called keep well, that same energy, bro. I think the word is called pandering. <laughs> there you go. Well, check it out. Check it out. They were saying if Ryan Garcia loses this fight, he should retire because he's not really taking boxing serious. What should the guy who lost to the guy that's not taking I boxing should retire. serious? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's schizophrenic and a drunk and a you know pothead and all this. What should what should that guy do? Take a year <laughs> off that broken you know cheekbone. Take a year off with that broken cheekbone. For and you, you, that jaw shit. you only you only survived because you held on for dear life, and the referee was on your side, buddy. Take a so year off. Rethink who you are. Stop pretending to be a Muslim. Stop pretending to be self righteous. Stop pretending that you're Mayweather. You're none of those things. And you, everything I just mentioned, you're none of those things. Find out who you really are, and reju you know re like rejuvenate who you are. Uh, you know. Go back to the drawing board, because you go took back to one thirty-five. Go back to one thirty-five yeah. and beat up little guys, bro. That's what the fuck Devin Haney needs to do. You took a L, and your fans did too. They took a L with you. Hey, by the way, I, last note on on Tank Davis, because I know we, we got a couple of his fans that don't like us bringing him up. But I don't know if they, please tell me this is fake. Apparently, he tweeted this yesterday. He was inviting uh, Ryan Garcia over to a club and all that. He says, call me, bro. You can get my number now. I'm on the club, bro. Everything on me. And then apparently, he re retweeted back and said, I'm in my, I'm in New York. Call me. Colt 45 on me and Coke. Now, please tell me he's talking about soda. <laughs> please tell me he's talking about soda. Please tell me he's not. Uh... Yeah. Coca-Cola. Okay, good. So I'm a Coca-Cola. Now he yeah. wants to be friends, bro. Now he wants to be friends. I wouldn't apparently, be friends with none of these dudes. I wouldn't be friends with none of these oh, dudes. Bro. Fuck that guy. Earl Stevens says it's fake. They would know. They would, fake, they would know. They would know that when they see me, we ain't friends. We rivals. That's Earl what Stevens, Ryan should do. Earl Stevens says that it's fake. I hope so, man. Because I mean, the guys, the guys already got a fight set. Like now that he should be <laughs> doing <laughs> coke <laughs> on the bill, but you never know, man. It's Tank Davis, man. Uh, he's a out of control figure himself. But uh, what else was I going to say here? Yeah, it, it, yeah. Bill Haney seemed very dejected afterwards, and he's like, yeah, we want a rematch. 
I don't know, guys. Should uh, Ryan Garcia give him a rematch? Because I think he already said he won't, right? He's moving on. Under no America. circumstances, bro. Under no circumstances. Move on Yo, with your career. Good for Hopkins. Good for good him. How does Vanilla that feel? Vanilla Hopkins was in the ring looking at Bill Haney talking shit. <laughs> 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 you gotta see it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Haney wanted none of that. He wanted none of that. <laughs> yeah, Bill I like Haney was... House, man. That's a crazy the games were over. The games were over. He was like, this is real shit now. What's up? Do you still want to talk shit? And he's what? over there just holding his boy's shoulders with his broken jaw and shit. Fucking hair getting grayer by the round. I love that shit, bro. You know, it's interesting. Every time Cambosos, Cambo when he lost to uh, Haney, after the fight, they're all friendly. They're taking pictures after the fight in the dressing room like they're friends now. Even And, and you know, uh, the, the, the Cambosos are a little bit cocked too because then uh, they went to one of Haney's fight. I think it was a program fight. Or, I forget where in the United States. And you see... Uh, Camboso's father goes out to Bill Haney and they're shaking. He's hugging him. And I was like, come on, man. I didn't see the same energy from the Haney's this time. They look dejected. They, they didn't have the same energy. They didn't, say, they didn't seem to have the same enthusiasm or goodwill after a loss that other guys had towards them. So I don't know, man. It just seemed uh, a lot of people really disliked uh, their behavior. And uh, you're seeing it now afterwards here, uh, jumping in a little bit. I wanted to post that picture that Sober's put on the discord here where it says missing big big mouth haney but i can't fucking for some reason i can't put it up man i'll try to put it up later um by the way i do i do want to tell people to please hit the like hit the like hit the like it really helps out i've opened up the phone lines here so that people can call in uh we're still gonna talk here obviously on the panel and uh but if people want to call in give us their thoughts on everything that transpired yesterday uh, and by the way, we got to talk to I got to go take a latrine break before we go to the phone calls. But if you guys want to talk about the Barboza fight too, against Macomb. Oh, man. Yeah, he looked I bad mean, in there. What, what, is this a fucking joke? The guy's name is Sean Macombs? I mean, what the <laughs> Where's the I, Diddy? I yeah, where's the Diddy? <laughs> diddy? <laughs> look, look, look. I, 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 outside of his name, Barbo I was watching the fight on Never Sober Stream. And so I was, we were all watching it together. And I think we were all in agreement. Like, McCombs clearly won that fight. He was I don't know what the fuck was going on. Yeah. He was pulling out an Irish shoulder roll on him. He was leading, he was, <laughs> he was leading, he was leading with a, with a straight left and landing it and then getting out of the way. It was ugly, bro. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I wanted Barboza to whoop some ass. I, want, I was, you know, I was getting behind Barboza. I wanted to say that he's a fucking Teofimo is fucking ducking him. And he kind of was, but. You know, he just didn't look that good in the ring, and they gave him the win. There were some weird decisions, right? Because there was the um, Scrappy Ramirez also lost on the card, and that was a, a pretty close fight. But the scorecards were pretty wide, and Scrappy Ramirez was the, the the bigger name out of the two. And I thought they would give him all the close rounds, and it ended up the other guy started him. The guy Jimenez won, and then Barboza kind of robbed McComb. And then we even thought that uh, we even thought that um, they were going to try to rob Garcia after he whooped his ass, and but he they gave him the decision. So the the judges were kind of um, it was, the decisions were kind of strange last night. They were kind of all over the place, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, real quick, uh, Sobers, I don't know if you know, uh, didn't um Ryan Garcia's little brother fought that night too? Mm, I don't think so. I think he's going to fight uh, um, Vargas. No. Son, yeah, it was Fernando Vargas's son. That's what I meant to say. They're gonna fight on Triller, I think. So I don't even know what under that what what banner that falls under. Like, you know what I mean? Triller's like an app, right? It's just basically like one of these like uh it's a music app, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm not sure I'm not too much sure about um how Triller's um their boxing shows are. I know they, they did that one with uh Roy Jones and Mike Tyson, right? And I yeah. think they did a couple with Jake Paul, and they and they kind of stopped doing business with them. But Triller kept doing fights, and they're still doing fights apparently, just not on the same level anymore. Right. <clears throat> yep. Hey, uh, right. Sobers, that GIF Yo. that you did you make that GIF with the Ryan Garcia dancing, and it's got a got this glitch yeah. VHS. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's pretty good. What, what, what program did you What program did you use to make it? Uh, so app an app called. Gift maker. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> oh, so I it's, it's got filters. No, but the filters and all that, the, 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 the glitch filter. The filters the are good. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I smoked That's nice, many cigars yesterday. Goddamn. But yeah, I try to make. I try to find another uh, video of Devin Haney dancing, so I could have them like looking like it's a dance off. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, that was pretty. <laughs> that's a good strip, man. Uh, I want to tell people man. that the uh, the phone lines are open in case anybody wants to call in. I see we already got one pe uh, person calling in here. Let's go to the phone lines real quick. Let's go to 210. 210, you're on the air. 210, what's on your mind? Yo, Southpaw. What's up, Southpaw Lefty, man? What's up? I got I got so much to say, man. I'm gonna have to be like a uh, booty juice and call in like two or three times, dude. <laughs> but um, yeah. wow, well, what what a night, bro! Like I I wasn't expecting that, and everybody's like just shocked. But it's a good thing for boxing because like it, it really like stirs everything up. When like wow, you know, it's exciting in a way because everybody's like, holy shit, what did I just watch? You know what I mean? Everybody was like. It was crazy. I, I went out and I saw it with a bunch of casuals. I was at I was like this sports bar and it was packed, man. And people were fucking eating it up, dude. They were, they were just like they didn't know they didn't know Devin Haney. They didn't know Ryan Garcia and all the antics. They don't follow the sport like we do, but they fucking loved it. So it's like, thank God, you know what I mean? Because like UFC killed it last week, and uh, so now it's like you know we we kind of get we kind of get some a shot in the arm, you know what I mean? But. It was it, it was frustrating to see the referee. Remember, everybody's praising Harvey Doc back, you know, months ago. I mean, for a while now. You, you hear you hear everybody praising. Oh, Harvey Doc, he's a good ref. He's a good ref, man. All these all these refs. I don't care who they are, where they're from, what their track record is. When their number is called, they're gonna answer. They're gonna answer because they're all on hold. They're pretty much like somebody who's like a uh, has a pager on them, and like when they get paid. They know what to do. They know their job. And his job was to fucking try to protect and help Devin Haney as much as possible. So that was a frustrating thing. I think that was a draw, right, on one of the scorecards? Yeah. Yeah, so that that was the most frustrating thing. So I'm watching this shit, and I'm like, and, and, and I talked about it on uh, open lines. I was like, yo, man, like, Devin Haney, I don't trust him. I think he has, he, he's been, his, his career has been manipulated, carefully moved. You know, he got he got the gift decision. He got the old pro grades that, you know, he looked like shit and got a gift decision. That's why they picked him. I'm like, I don't know how good this dude is, but the frustrating thing is, I don't think Ryan's going to be able to answer those questions. But sure enough, thank God he answered his questions. And I can't stand Ryan. I don't like either one of these guys. But I will respect Ryan because maybe he'll start a new trend where everybody's going to be like, fuck the weight classes, fuck the belts. You know what I mean? Let's just come in at our best, not have to pay these bullshit sanctioning fees. You know what I mean, and just and just fight. You know what I mean. So I, I I think he's marching to his own beat, and it's the same thing with his fan base. He doesn't have to try to act Mexican. He ha he has his own built-in, uh, unique fan base. So now he's probably got his own unique kind of like, uh, career where he doesn't have to abide by the weight classes or nothing, you know, or or the agenda. So it, it was a good it was a good night, man. I didn't really watch the undercard, but man, I'm telling you, man, the casuals. We needed this, man. We we really, really needed this, and uh, yeah, man. Like, I and like and like I, I agree with um, who was it recognized, man. All these guys are suspect, man. Like we we're arguing about it yesterday on open lines, like because um, I know he, he I know I remember he kicked one dude off for a second, uh, put him in a timeout because like we we're arguing about who's better, Tio, Devin, um. All these guys, but at, at 140, you know, around that weight class, but in, in tank. But the thing is, like, we don't know yet. The jury's still out because n they're not fighting each other yet. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. tonight we got to see Devin get exposed, and and Tank is not far behind, man. I'm serious. Like, he, he, the Errol Spence effect is going to catch up with him, where his bad habits, the drinking, getting hit a lot in the fights, uh, getting fat, going to jail, like that shit's going to catch up to him, and. It might even be against a cherry pick like Frank Martin. You never know. But this guy's never going to fight anybody. But it's it's around a corner. We might see this from Tank. That's true. You're right, man. Yeah, I've said that before too, man. And you're right. And uh, look, the thing about boxing, that you said that it's, it was a good night for boxing. And we got potentially great nights uh, upcoming, man. We got... Uh, Munguia versus Canelo, and afterwards, you never know, Canelo Benavides. Uh, we got Uzik versus Fury. We got Inoue versus Neri. And there might be another fight that I'm forgetting here. Bam versus uh, Estrada. Although I don't expect that one to be that great, but you never know. So, yeah, man, boxing is, is coming. Uh, you know, 2023 was great, and 2024 looks to live up to that as well. So we'll we'll make sure to st stay, stay tuned for that one. All right, listen, Southpaw, we got to move on here, but uh, thank you for your call, and call back next time, Ramon. Take it easy out there. Uh, I'm going to call back in five minutes. 
All right. <laughs> all right, but yeah, feel free to do so. Why not? No, Why not? I'm, all right. I'm, all right, I'm joking. I'm joking. All right, okay. all right. Well, you could if you want to, but anyway. Um, the other thing I want to say is I, I was right there with him when he, some of the points he was making until he said, I agreed with recognize. I said, oh, you lost me, man. But uh, don't forget to hit the like, fellas. Hit the like, hit the like, hit the like. It really helps us out. And, hey, uh, great minds think alike. That's what they say. <laughs> great minds think alike. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, don't forget to hit the like, fellas. Hit the like, hit the like. Let's go to another phone call here. Let's go to 323. 323, you're on the air. 323, what's on your mind? What's up, fellas? Praise to motherfucking Allah. Ah, oh, come on. Wait a minute. The language, um, please, man. Uh, the language, please, on, please, 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 please. God fucking damn it, you guys. Hey, Allah, there you go. You said... I love it. Chief... Chief, you said um, you said Harvey Duck was uh, uh, was incompetent earlier. Somebody said that. I don't think so. I think he knew exactly what he was doing. He knew exactly what he was doing, man. He was fattening up that pocket. Exactly. He was protecting. He was protecting homeboy. I mean, I had to watch the fight again this morning just to confirm a point that I I think I made it on the uh, Discord yesterday. That neither guy really threw a lot of shots. I mean. There wasn't a whole lot of shots thrown, but the shots that Ryan threw were just so much more impactful when he decided. He, he, he didn't throw a lot. He, he fought in spots, and it served him very well. I mean, the guy with that stupid shoulder roll and the, the shots that, that Haney threw, yeah, I totally agree with, um, with Jimmy on this. He mentioned that last night that, man, he just, he just like battered that kidney. And he got away with it. He got away with behind. Okay, so if the ref, if, if the judges saw that and counted those shots, shame on them because those were the shots that mostly got in. Were like the one or two good clean shots he caught him with. He caught him with some hooks. Ryan took him well. But other than that, were you counting those shots as illegal shots? If you were, then I guess we're not watching the same sport because that, that was egregious. That was horrible. It was horrifying to see a guy get hit in the back of the head. Now my dogs are going crazy. Oh, you got it that was dog? Horrifying to see a guy get, sh get 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 take shots to the back of the head. You know, it was it was it was pretty brutal. And no, and no. Hey, uh, no, no, you got that dog? No points taken away. <laughs> I got I got a uh, I got Garcia right here. He's, uh, he's getting crazy. He saw it. He saw he saw he saw a line of coke down the street, so he wanted to chase it. I'm a dog. Um. <laughs> I'm a dog. Anyway, man. I don't know. I'm glad it happened. I was I, I was relieved. I was jumping out of my seat. I thought it was a pretty entertaining fight. It was very sloppy. Haney did not throw his jab much at all. It was just uh, it was a complete shit show, man. I'm just glad this kid got exposed. And hell no, he doesn't deserve a rematch. Did he give Loma a rematch? Fuck no. It's about time the weight oh. bully got bullied. This guy's made a career of fighting smaller guys. This guy's made a whole career out of that, while having having the weight advantage over everyone, and getting rocked by light lightweights, featherweights. So, yeah, I'm I'm pretty happy with what I saw. I don't well, really care for Ryan, friend. but you got yeah. you, you got beat by by an Instagram star. Congratulations, <laughs> you're a fraud. Hey, what are you doing to your dogs, man? Stop them, man. I mean, we we're, we're not pro of dog abuse here on this channel. We respect <laughs> animals, man. Come on, man. Stop it. Ah, come on. <laughs> What are you doing? All right, well, listen, Don Maldasos, man. Anything um, else you want to say? You, well, no, that's it. I mean, he's not going to be able to chew food for a while. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. He's you just, know, maybe, uh, he'll go on a, maybe he'll go on a, on a Muslim fast or something, you know? Ah, come on. Why do you got to make it about re, uh, religion, man? Come on. <laughs> on a Sunday morning, man. All right, you, guys have, a, you guys have a great goddamn Sunday. You too, man. Take it easy. Thank you for your call there, uh, uh, Don Maldasos, and we'll talk later, man. Take it easy out there. See you, bro. All right, that was all my that was right there. Shout out to him. Uh, don't forget to hit the like, fellas. Hit the like, hit the like, hit the like. It language. really helps us out. The language, yeah, the, the language, man. Um, on a Sunday, the, too. On a Sunday morning, man. On a Sunday morning. All right, listen. Uh, God damn it. Let's get another phone call here. Let's go to 918. They're starting to pack up now. 918, you're on the air. 918, what's in your mind? Yo, y'all hear me? We can hear you, 918. What's up? I, I, it's half blind again, and I'm gonna be honest with you. 
Uh, I'm kind of, first of all, I'd like to say I'm embarrassed to be half black after what I saw from Haney. Really? Oh. Uh, second of all, remember how I said um, the only way I saw Ryan winning was if he trained his butt off, 9,000 years of kung fu mastered in the hyperbolic time chamber. That man was ply- playing five-dimensional chess since the beginning of time. That man hated Haney so much, he waited for Haney to get at the top of the top to have everything he's ever had. And, oh, undisputed two-division champion and took it all away from him last night. And now I'm honestly surprised he actually did it. But, Damn. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. The only, the, only thing, the only thing I will say is that uh, what, what made the fight kind of bad is there was a lot of clinching on both sides. Both sides were using that, that ass style. Well, in the case of Ryan, he, uh, he used that mass style because, let's be honest here, usually the, the fattest ass has the most mass in case nah, of, come on, what's this the case, he was using that Mexican-American slick style. He was using that Mexican-American slick style. That's what he was using. He wasn't using no ass style. He, he beat the smaller ass with more mass. That's what happened. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I'm, 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 I mean, that's what happened. Uh, I mean, like I said, like Haney, Haney had everything. I, I, that's, that's why I said what I said is all oh, Haney's gonna make him quit with. But like, I'm like, well, he, he went to. I mean, he went to, to an old man Loma. Oh, it's old man Loma still, but it's still Loma. It's just, it's just still a far better. Old man Loma is still far better than Ryan. And I don't know what happened here, man. He, he, either the man got got let Ryan get to him, or Ryan secretly made him made his career absolute dog water he he quit on purpose i i guess after the luke campbell fight he said you know what i hate i hate i hate this guy i hate haney so much i'm willing to sacrifice my entire career just to beat him up that's the only thing i can think of that 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 plus the fact we just be honest we kind of i did kind of overrate haney but damn that's a surprise another thing i'm surprised about is Honestly, the Barbozo fight, I, 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 I don't know how that man even got the W. I'm going to be honest with you. All, all I saw was an Irish man just outbox this fucking guy this entire fight, just outbox the hell out of him. I don't, I don't even know who had him winning. I'm going to be honest with you. The, them judges don't deserve, to be, uh, don't deserve to be hired for any fight. Um, I saw that. I'm, I'm surprised. You know, I didn't buy the pay-per-view. I, instead, uh, I, I did some, uh, some sailing of the high seven seas. Oh, come on. For that pay per view, because I decided, you know what, I got, I got I got nothing else to do, and I ain't about to give my money to them, unfortunately. You know what I mean? I have to, I have to bleep that, because I don't want people to uh, think that, uh, or hear what you just said. But yeah, you're right, man. And uh, good to hear that you enjoy the fight, that you were surprised. That's what makes the sport entertaining. And uh, yeah, man, I mean, yeah. hey, it's, it, it is what it is. It's boxing, man. I mean, I'll, it, I'll, yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I will say one last thing, though, is that, um, well, two last things. Two is, last uh, things. That ref, even though he was trying to help Haney out, he probably screwed him over his career-wise. Because let's be honest here, Haney took a beating. And good. what what I want to see is how Haney is going to look like in the next fight. Because Haney already didn't have a good chin. And Ryan was clipping him pretty hard. Uh, the, the follow-up thing with that was uh, Ryan was clipping him hard with throwing some pretty crappy hooks. Uh, there was a video done that somebody mentioned that his elbow was just not was overextending it was it, it wasn't in line with his punches he, he so he, he was just purely throwing off pure instinct you know pure beginner's punch and still clipping this man haney had 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 he had he thrown a very technical hook he probably would have flatlined haney 100 percent. maybe yeah you're um, right man, man so yeah and the last thing is um I, i'm gonna be honest with you i, I have a gut feeling that nary's about to take it no way to the 12th round um, I, I don't think he's going to win, but I, 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 I think that in a way is going to be taken to hell and back by Derry. That's my prediction. Hey, we'll show, we shall see indeed, man. I think people are feeling the spirit of surprises now. So uh, maybe, maybe. All right, mm-hmm. well, listen, uh, thank you for your call and uh, call back next time, Ramen. I think it's the other. Yeah, yeah. Uh, God, God is good. God is great. Absolutely. You said you're preaching to the choir. Take it easy out there. Um, fellas, don't forget to hit the like, hit the like, hit the like, hit the like. It really helps us out. All right, fellas, let's get on a phone call here. Let's get through them. Let's go to 210. 210, you're on the air. 210, what's on your mind? Can you hear me? Yes, 210, go ahead. I guess I just got two things to say. I'm going to have to disagree with the panel a little bit. I really don't think, while it is unprofessional, I believe that three pounds didn't really do much for uh, in helping Ryan. Like, yes, Haney was more drained than Ryan, but he didn't really do anything different than what we've seen before. He dips to the the same place. He always has a shitty defense on the inside, and Ryan Ryan's always done what he's done. He did, um he's did, obviously his power was the exact same. 
if Tank was that defensive against him, even though Ryan was drained at that point. I don't know. I guess I'm just going to have to disagree with the fact that the three pounds had to do anything with the outcome of the fight. I feel like if Ryan had drained himself to 140, it would the exact same out outcome. Maybe, maybe. But, I mean, yeah, it's not really the three pounds that makes a difference. Like you said, it it is the, the process of losing the weight. Uh, but, hey, man, listen, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. And Haney made Haney agreed to take the fight. He agreed to go along with it. So, like they said with uh, Ryan Garcia when he fought Tank Davis, no excuses. He agreed to the deal. So, it is what it is, man. Now, True, you, yeah. you, you want to make a second point, you said? Uh I just wanted to keep my call short because I want to listen to the other guys are saying. But uh, have a nice show. I'm really liking the show, guys. Well, thank you, man. Thank you for uh, keeping it concise and uh, uh, being prepared with your point, man. Take it easy out there, man. Call back next time. Call back next time. Good day. All right. Have a good day, man. Yeah. Take it easy. Yeah, it's a good call, man. Uh, kept it concise. Yeah. Was prepared. Yeah, preparation, 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 well, fellas. Go to the Remember, next caller. nobody plans to, to fail. They I just fail to plan. I, I, yeah, I wanted to th uh, throw a shout out to you, Mr. BDA, because more on more than one occasion, you you suspected something was happening, because the last two times off the edge, you just talking to me, you kept bringing it up, you kept saying, I don't know, man, I can see it, I can see the way Haney moves. You were like really breaking it down to the way Haney moves, comes forward, lacks defense, and the way that ang the way you know he with Garcia's you know point, and I was trying to talk all the ways that it wouldn't happen. And you were very consistent on that, so you saw that. So I just want to put that out there because you will never, you know, bring shit like that to the public on yourself. You just don't do it, so I'm going to do it for you. So I just want to say props, man. You did read something. You saw something like that happening because you brought it up more than once. So well, I appreciate we'll it, Jimmy. Out there. I appreciate that. I just must, I must reiterate my thought process when it comes to picking fights or whatever it is. The pick is not the, the, the most important thing for me. Is giving different scenarios of what can happen alternate universes if you will to make it sound more fancy or fancier uh, you know it's, it's like with tank davis versus ryan garcia ultimately i picked uh, uh, ryan garcia but i didn't pick him to overwhelmingly beat tank davis i picked him to actually do what he was doing in some of the runs he was just tapping him here tapping him there very lackadaisical boring meandering fight and maybe he would get the nod but it, it didn't but i also you know said the way tank davis can win is running around the ring, hypnotizing Garcia, and running him into something big. So, ultimately, I'm not too concerned with the pick. I am concerned with, more concerned with giving people, uh, you know, different scenarios of how the fight can go or occur based on the styles and what we see. And that's what I love about this show because you guys have changed my mind too before. I remember uh, before Ben Rodriguez versus, uh, what's his name? Um, Sonny Edwards. I was like, man, what? I, I was on the fence, blah, blah, blah. And then you and Gonzalo, I showed you clips and you're like, man, Bam's going to take him out. And I said, oh, okay, yeah, you, I think you guys are right. And then boom, <laughs> it happens. So we all help each other out here on this show. That's the, uh, that's the beauty of it. And hopefully the, the listeners can uh, partake in that as well and gleam something out of it. All right, listen, we're slobbering all over each other here. Let's go back to the phone lines here. Let's go to 916. 916, you're on the air. 916, what's on your mind? Hello? Uh, 916, I can hear Hello? myself in the back. I can hear myself in the background. Please mute uh, whatever you, the speakers you get there in the background because I can hear myself. All right, please. Oh, okay. Oh, I got you, man. Shout out to the show, man. You got the great show. Man, I just want to say, man, I'm surprised. I'm surprised everybody was talking shit about Ryan. They was disrespecting this man, saying all this stuff. And he said it before the fight. He said well, not before, after the fight, he said he'd been boxing his whole life. You know what I mean? Boxing his whole life just because on YouTube, that don't mean, that don't take away from the fight. And um, I'm very happy for boxing. You know, everybody's surprised, everybody talking about it. Um, only thing is, I think it would be kind of messed up Ryan Garcia next fight if he do make 140. <laughs> it's like, what do you think he's going to do? You think he's going to go up, or you think he's going to fight at 140 next? That's my he's question. 147. You already declared it. You think he, so? He's going up. Yes, he made um, no. He okay. made it very clear. I'm going to 147. So there you go. I think that was the right move too. 
which I agree with your opinion. Oh, okay, okay. Because, man, because he made 140 the last fight. He came off a win. But, man, this is a big win for him. I'm very happy for him. He fought an elite fighter, and he won. So, you know what I mean? I hope I hope everybody will just know, you know, he come to fight, he come to win. He ain't no, he ain't no bum or nothing like that. You know, yeah, so think- I'm very happy. Yeah, people found out the hard way. I mean, I I didn't expect him to win. Although I I must say though, Caller, I, he won the fight. But I I like you know, let's not forget forget the fact that there were a lot of rounds where he wasn't doing anything. <laughs> he was moving around the ring, clinching a lot. He was. That's why I keep mm-hmm. saying, telling people it wasn't that great a fight. Other than that, the drama of the moment, the fact that, oh, we didn't expect him to to walk out with a the win. There were a lot of moments where there was a lot of clinching, a lot of groping, a lot of um. TC yeah. from both guys. A little disgusting if you ask me. Yeah, yeah. What about that judge though? He said it was a draw. One of the judges said it was a draw. Yeah. Alper Ryan, Max Ryan Palooka. got like three knockdowns. Man, that's crazy. But yeah, yeah that's my time, man. I just wanted to say what I had to say. All right. Well listen, thank you for your call, caller, and uh, call back next time. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Yes, sir. Thank you. Take it easy, man. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, Max DeLuca. That sounds like the name of a used car salesman or something. I mean, you gotta you gotta watch out with those DeLucas. <laughs> I'm just saying. Hey, anyway, I don't want to get too much into that. But um, don't forget to hit the like, fellas. Hit the like, hit the like, hit the like, hit the like. It really helps us out. I gotta take a drink of my black tea here because I need a little second wind for the show. Uh, let's get back to another call here. Let's go to nine one seven nine one seven. You're in the air. Nine one seven. What's in your mind? How you doing, Mike? What a beatdown that was. We got Conor McGregor on the line. What's up, man? Answer- it answered a lot of questions, didn't it? <laughs> a lot of questions answered. Is he Devin sure Haney, did. what is he, pound for pound number one, they were saying? Where the fuck is he now? <laughs> huh? <laughs> He's now. He's even got his daughter or whatever. Oh, yeah. Like, Talk about him, smack. <laughs> All right, he's got the whole family involved in the smack talking. Hey. Caller, you still there? No, he hung up. I remember he called in a, a while back. <laughs> I don't know why the way he speaks always makes me laugh. It's almost like he's speaking with a smile. Like he, he's in on a joke that nobody knows about. But shout out to him. All right, let's go to another phone call here. Let's go to 214. 214, you're on the air. 214, what's on your mind? Hey, what's up, guys? I uh, hope you guys have a good Sunday. Um, yeah, I, I didn't really watch it because uh, the fight. I, I didn't get to watch the full fight huh. because my job was being was being dicks. So I had to work Saturday. Oh. So, but I, I I checked on it and I and I, and I and I heard they got real crazy. Ryan was dropping over and over, and I watched a little bit of it. But you know, I know that Ryan fights in the spurts, so I know the fight wasn't going to be that entertaining. So I just watched when and just watched the highlights, even though, you know, I know you're supposed to watch full fight, but I know Ryan fights in spurts. So I thought it was just saved me some time. I'm like, wow. He, the way he was knocking down Devin Haney was crazy. Like, and I, I want to say something. Uh, I want to give credit to somebody that you wouldn't expect. I want to give credit to uh, Danny Garcia. Hmm. Danny Garcia said that Devin Haney and both Ryan Garcia were welterweights. Ryan Garcia won because he didn't try to come down to uh, 140. He knew he wasn't a 140-pounder. Devin is a 147-pounder, too, but he's trying to make his way, and he's he's using his youth to abuse against smaller fighters that can't reach him with their small reach. But instantly, from the, from the first round, you know, Devin throws a jab, but, you know, Ryan was able to counter with a left hook, which is normally what other smaller fighters can't do. You know, I know you guys like to clown Devin, but, you know, uh, Ryan is a unique specimen in himself because of his height, his reach, his speed, and his amateur experience. And he's got power. Like, all these other guys don't have this stuff and the combination that they that Ryan has it. So even though uh, Ryan did him dirty, it's going to be hard to find other guys that can do it. You know, L- Linares, if he was younger, maybe he could have knocked out uh, Devin Haney. And also, you know, uh, what's his name? Barbosa. 
He didn't look too good. I'm watching some of the highlights. It doesn't. He, the, the Irish guy wasn't amazing, but he was just out boxing him, and then you know uh, he found it hard to get on the inside. And with the you know the low guard slash Philly shell, he was really really messing up uh, Barbosa. I don't know if this was just an off night because it's hard to tell. These guys, they don't fight enough, and they don't fight enough important opponents. But Barbosa needed to look good, and he didn't. I wonder if he's going to give this guy a, a rematch or they're just going to try to move on and see if he can get bigger opportunities. But, you know, Barbosa needs to look good because, you know, he's been chasing guys like TFEMO, trying to show everybody that, you know, he's this, he, he's up there with these guys. And you don't need a setback like this because, you know, people are going to forget about you and they're going to dismiss you immediately. And I, I think he probably still is a good fighter, but, you know, I always knew no, that he yeah. was never great. Yeah, you, listen, I mean, you make some excellent points, and I just want to clarify, like, okay, we're, we are making fun of uh, Devin Haney a little bit here, but hey, it's, it's, it's been a long time coming with some of, it's more like, like Jimmy said, it's more his father that raises, uh, that uh, sort of uh, raises an ire in boxing fans, but I'll say it, man, I can differentiate yeah. the character of a fighter from the skills, and look, if, if I hated Haney, for example, and, and I let that um, hate cloud my judgment, I wouldn't have... I wouldn't have picked him to easily beat Regis Prongry. Like, I realize he's a good fighter. My mm -hmm. thing is, is just, he's not Mayweather 2.0, like some people, uh, some fans, some media members were making oh, him out to be. Not. Yeah, absolutely not. And he did get like, off the canvas. Man, the man, this, was, that, this, so. was a, this was a bad loss, man. He took a lot of punishment. He got beat up. And then sometimes he looked out of place. He, lo he looked surprised. He looked surprised the, damn the whole time. Like he got hit with a jab. He's like, Ryan can throw a jab. Like he looked so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did notice that in a couple of instances when Ryan this, uh, Garcia decided to throw the jab, you could tell Haney was like, "Wait, wait a minute, this guy actually has a jab." But yeah, man, it was an interesting fight night, and uh, I wouldn't mind seeing a rematch with different ref with a different referee, but. You know, Haney didn't want to give certain people rematches, so I don't know if this uh, deserves another one. But listen, Cole, we got to move nah. on here. Ryan should go. Let me say this go before ahead, you guys go. Ahead, go. Ryan should go to 147. Devin should go to 147 too. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. So we'll, we'll see how they look over, up there, man, without having to kill themselves to make weight. All right, well, listen, man, uh, thank you for your call, and mm -hmm. call back next time, all right? Take it easy out there. All right. All right, uh, let's go to another phone call. Hey, don't forget to hit the like, fellas. Hit the like, hit the like, hit the like, hit the like. Let's go to another phone call here. Let's go to 404. 404, you're on the air, man. 404. That's me. That's you, 404. Hello? Yes, you're on the air. Hello? Hey, what's up? This is Coach Eddie again. Oh, Coach Eddie, what's up? Hey, nothing much, man. Uh, a hey, good show today, man. You had some good calls in. People made some good points. Uh, I kind of want to echo what the other caller said. I'm not surprised at all. I mean, mm. like you said, Ryan Garcia, this kid been fighting since he's a kid, man. He's eight years old. So people, there's some people that don't know boxing don't understand that boy been boxing his whole entire life. And people get, you know, they get sidetracked by how a person looks. He, maybe he doesn't look like a fighter, but he can fight. Doesn't matter how you look. I mean, Oscar De La Hoya was the same type of way. He didn't look like a fighter, but he can fight, man. Sugar Ray Leonard, same type of guy. Muhammad Ali, these guys didn't look like fighters, but they can fight. So you can't worry about how a guy looks at what he does in the ring. And kids, fifteen-time national champion, got speed, he got power. You can't coach that. And he's a, he's a dangerous guy. Uh, you know, to me, I can say Bill Haney. I fought him. You know, at the end of the day, for not getting getting Dev, Devin Haney a real trainer. Instead of trying to train him himself, but he doesn't know enough about boxing to go against somebody like Derek James. You know, uh, Derek James is a much better trainer than um than Ryan than uh Bill Haney. You know, in my opinion, you know what I'm saying. But I could say uh, Ryan did his thing, man. He, I think he needs to move up to 147, like you said. And if I was Jerron Booster in this, I'd be calling out uh, Ryan Garcia. I mean, that's a big money fight. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, yeah, I think I heard that uh that uh, Ryan Garcia's dad and, uh, and Eddie Hearn, they had a little verbal, uh, verbal altercation. And as soon as uh, Bill, I mean, Eddie Hearns mentioned Jerron Booth in his name, it was like radio silence. Like, nah, we ain't going no parts of that guy. 
I mean, because at the end, if it wouldn't have been for the knockdown, you know, Devin would have won the fight. But, you know, he would have, could have, should have. But Devin was out boxing him, but that power, man, you know, that was, that was the difference in the fight, man. It was just the, the power. He couldn't handle that speed, couldn't handle that power. And he looked, he was unprepared for what uh, Ryan Garcia brought to the table. And even, you know, they talk about that crazy defense he got, you know, turning his back and stuff. Hey, man, if you do want to turn his back, keep keep welling on him. You know what I'm saying? That's him. You know, you got to be vicious in that ring. You know, if a guy wants to turn away from you, you just keep punching to the referee, tell you not to punch. You know, that that's shots behind the ear because you're putting yourself in a position to get hit like that. Basically, you know, you're taking away the target. You know what I'm saying? Like when a guy, they tell you they ain't average, don't turn your back. You know, that's the, that's part of the rule. You, you're actually breaking the rules when you turn your back because now you're not allowing the guy to throw any punt, legal punches at you because you're turning away from him. But that referee was trash last night. You know, the referee <laughs> gave Devin Haney too much time to recover and also allowing Ryan Garcia, you know, to turn his back like that, which, which kind of took away Devin Haney's, you know, opportunity to land scoring blows because you're literally turning your back. You That's know, right, yeah. it, it was, that referee, was, he didn't do it. Harvey Dog is usually a good referee, but he didn't do a good referee. Good job. Last uh, night. I, I guess... Harvey Duck needs to have his pay ducked. <laughs> Get it ducked? I mean, yeah, listen, man. Uh, yeah. We'll see what that... Yeah, you're right, man. Uh, that the, There were some ugly tactics from both guys. And uh, I can only imagine how much better the fight would have looked had both guys been take, been been penalized for the clinching. But hey, I guess we'll never know, man. Yeah. I will listen. Yeah, and one, uh, one, more, one more quick point. I'm going to be done. You know, the reason why Ryan Garcia reverted, you know, reverted to that leaning, turning his head, because uh, Devin Haney, if you go back and watch it, I think the second or third round, he was clocking him with left hooks. And he, he he hurt Ryan Garcia with one of those left hooks. You see, you go back and watch, you know, Ryan Garcia was stumbling all over the place because he mm -hmm. said, screw this, man, let me turn my back because the dude was catching me with left hooks. So that's why he started doing that. But, you know, right. it is what it is at the end of the day. Ryan Garcia did his thing and moved over to 147. There you go, man. All right, well, cool, listen, Shady, man. All right, BJ, cool, man. Yeah, I would say... I would say Devin Haney cool. did was thinking he had him hurt with the left hook, but then he ended up on the canvas, and he was like, "Wait, who's hurt again?" Yeah, but but you know what though? That's shit. What the fuck? Okay, yeah, that's what I was thinking about in in a potential Teofimo Lopez versus uh, Garcia fight. I would give Teofimo Lopez a very good chance of winning because he can crack with both hands, and he's got a good gazelle hook, a, a little bit like Roy Jones. And if he sets it up properly, I could see him taking Ryan Garcia out. Garcia, Garcia lives by the gun and he dies by the gun, as we saw against Tank Davis. So that's a very dangerous fight. And f listen, this whole thing about fighting Jerron Ennis, he, if he fights Jerron Ennis, he, uh, Garcia obviously wouldn't enjoy the, 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 the uh, weight advantage because Jerron Ennis is essentially a super middleweight. Every time you move up a division now, you're fighting guys that should be fighting two divisions above you. That's why I think everybody should be fighting. Uh, if we had... um. Same day wins. Everybody would have to fight two divisions above what where they are now, because they, they they this is ridiculous the the weight that some of these guys cut. Um, I also wanted to say yeah okay don't forget to hit the like hit the like hit the like it really helps out. Uh, Jimmy, I wanted to ask you something. People are making uh, bringing up the issue of um, Derek James versus Bill Haney. Now Bill Haney was at a time working with uh, Ben Davidson for the Linares fight, I believe. And I think the Jojo Diaz fight too. Then he was no longer in the corner, but from what I understand, he was still working with Devin Haney by analyzing video along with a, with a YouTuber as well. Uh, Bill Haney did tell his son, stay low after he got caught with that left hook. When, if you're fighting Ryan Garcia, is the best way to do it to stay low and make him punch down because he still keeps his chin up in the air a little bit? Well, the problem with going low, you could kind of catch it. You know what I mean? You're lining up with his, more into his check. What I would have done is use your length. Yeah. Oh, God. You he would step in directly. It just, he did a lot of stupid things. There was no, he did no adjustments. Listen, here's my opinion. It's all his base is just my opinion. I don't think they want to spend the money. I don't think they want to try to spend to give the 15% to a trainer. Fuck that, man. We'll keep that money. <laughs> you know what mm -hmm. I mean? You're that good. We don't need a trainer. You know, you beat... <laughs> That's what you get. Haney's not a fighter. He's not a trainer like that. He's not a world-level trainer. And uh, so, yeah, you, you cheaped out. You fucking... And you paid for it. 
in the other ways. Because his yeah. son's never going to be the same. His confidence is gone. Gone. When you get beat up and dropped like that, again, props to him from getting off the canvas. Showed more hot than I really thought the kid had. Doesn't matter, though. His confidence is rocked. He's sitting at home right now drinking his fucking meals. That's a rough place to be, man. Yeah, that's a dark place to be in. The, you know, doubts abound. Uh, they become a, a, murk, a murky sea of doubt and uh, despair. And let me tell you, the what I want you you mentioned that the fact that they, the the Haynes might be a, a little bit more frugal here, not wanting to spend the money. It reminds me of the same thing with the Lopez's. Remember, he they had um, Joey Gamash for Teofimo Lopez against um, Vasilo Machenko, and then all of a sudden, whoops. We never saw him again in the corner. So, yeah, some, I think, it, could it be an issue of money or is it also an issue of ego? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, I agree with that assessment. <laughs> I believe it's his ego, too. You get all these people on, he goes on all these fucking YouTube channels and runs his mouth and lies. I mean, just basically, literally lies to his fucking teeth about shit. And they just, yeah, you got it, you got it, Bill, you got it, Bill. <laughs> no, he's got the fucking, you know, the, cam the camera in his face. You know what I mean? The camera in his face, and he's twenty million dollars. You turn down twenty million guarantee? Like that's such bullshit. The prince wasn't offering fucking anybody twenty million guaranteed. That's just a crock of shit. But he has no problem because he knows he's he's in with a group of people who'll just pump out clickbait trash. Over and over, and it becomes the narrative on that side on Twitter. And he knows it, it's not, you don't have to be right as long as you, you know what I mean? The fucking, the loudest one writes the fucking history. They're still saying Lomachenko ducked him. Lomachenko ducked. People don't forget that. Lomachenko ducked us and ran for the franchise belt. It, it's just literally made up fallacy. And they run with it. And so, yeah, I, I, that's for that reason. Fuck Bill Haney. So yeah, he's, I but, mean, uh, yeah, he's been looking out for his son to try to really pump him up and prop him up as as this Floyd Mayweather 2.0. Uh, but you're right, man. It was a lot of smoke and mirrors, a lot of shadow play in what he was saying. Like you said, the whole Lomachenko thing, which you debunked uh, way back. Uh, and then on top of that, and then we had a little another mini version of that with the Shakur Stevenson situation not that long ago. And so yep. it just seems like that's what they do. It's, 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 this is something, this standard operation, modus operandi for a lot of guys on uh, the internet now. They make a supposed offer to a certain fighter knowing that he will reject it. And they, these guys already have a, another fight in place. So then they go, oh, you see, he, he's ducking us. And then they move on to the other fight they already had set up. And that becomes the, the narrative. This guy avoided us. And that's how they prop themselves up. Because again, Haney couldn't prop himself up by being exciting, by being dominant, at least not dominant in, a, in an aesthetically pleasing fashion. I mean, he had to do, do it with certain asterisks, holding his way to decisions, um, uh, you know, getting gift decisions, scoping out fighters that were on the decline and then fighting them and, and then trying to cop. I mean, listen, after, after the pro grade fight, People were making, I, I gave him credit for the Progray fight because, again, we predicted that he would easily outbox Progress. So we were giving him credit for his skills, but at the same time, we were saying, hold your horses. Because I'm, I want to remind people a little bit, of, a little something here. Chad Dawson. Chad Dawson was an undefeated light heavyweight. Fast hands, very good footwork, length, the whole shebang. To the point where Floyd Mayweather in 2008 said, this guy is going to be the next pound for pound king. And what happened with Chad Dawson? Well, he beat Glenn Johnson who was close to 40, I believe. He beat Antonio Tover, who I believe, again, was in his 40s. Then he beat Bernardo Hopkins, who was also in his 40s. But what happened in between? He lost a close fight against Jean Pascal from my neck of the woods. Because Jean Pascal was a young fighter, very explosive. And then what happened later on when Chad Dawson fought another young guy his age, Andrew Ward. Andrew Ward dominating him. So some people speculated at the time and posited that, hey, by fighting these older fighters, he sort of got complacent. And lacks a days ago in his approach and and I, whatever it didn't it failed to prepare him for these young guns, and I argue it was a similar dynamic here with uh, uh, Haney. He never fought a guy who had that eclectic mix of speed and power who was his age. Linares came close, but he was what 34, 35, 
And even then, this dude, Linares, every other loss, that he, every loss that he's had, other than the Haney fight, has been by stoppage. The only guy who couldn't put a dent in him was Haney. The, that right there was a major red flag. And then the same thing with, um, with Gamboa, another guy that's been previously stopped. He couldn't put a dent in him either. If it's one, th if it's one time, okay, I can, okay, maybe it's, you know, off night, whatever. But when it happens, with, when you go the distance with two guys that other people have stopped, numerous other people have stopped, and you couldn't even put a dent in them, major red flag. And like uh, Recognize was saying, yes, skills pay the bills, don't get me wrong, good technique is a must, but sometimes uh, God-given gifts can trump those things. And that's what happened with Garcia, because Jimmy, you've pointed out Garcia's flaws for, for a long time now. Yes, he's incredibly quick, he's got the dynamite left hook, but he still made a lot of mistakes yesterday. And yet, despite those mistakes, he walked away the winner. Yep. Uh, but Jimmy, I also wanted to point it, something it out is, here. It, yeah. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, sorry, sorry. No, no, yes, I was saying yes, you were going to say something. You were asking Can I ask you about something? Sure, sure. I would say so. Um, I've been looking at um, little different things on the internet, and I see Shakur Stevenson is already begging um, Ryan Garcia, like, "Oh, I hope you honor your word, good win, and hopefully we can run it now." And I'm, I'm just thinking, at what weight does Shakur Stevenson think that he'd fight um, Ryan Garcia? Does he think he'd make him come down to 136, like, uh, like uh, Davis did, or would he? Act, or could you see? Um, Shakur Stevenson going up to 140 or 143 a catch weight even to get that fight. I don't think so. I don't see. I don't see why he do it because at 143 there's no belt on the has. line. Right. Yeah. Plus he also he also tweeted out robbery. Nah, really? Wow. Yeah, I believe he did. One of the fighters that I'm almost positive it was Shakur who tweeted out. Let me see. I think it was him who tweeted out robbery. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. I'd have to, uh, yeah, please find that because I don't know if he said that. But here's the thing, though. Again, before the, uh, Sh Shakur Stevenson, I do think he's better than Devin Haney. But that's another guy that's been overhyped. Now, that I'm not saying he doesn't beat, uh, that he loses to, to Garcia. But that's another dude that he's proven that he, mentally, he doesn't want to take any punches. Now, you think he's, got, he's not going to fight like he did against uh, um, De Los Santos if he ever takes on Garcia? It's going to be the same thing, guys. He was afraid of Nakatil's power. He's afraid of De Los Santos' power. And it's going to be the same thing as Garcia. And with the right judges, you never know. Maybe Garcia gets the win if it's in an eventful fight like the De Los Santos fight. Um, then that's what I'm saying. Now, yeah, but Jimmy, did you find that tweet? Did anybody find that? Did Shakur Stevenson really say robbery? Or I think, okay, no, you know what? I think I'm, you guys are... right now. I think you guys were talking about the Ruguru. Progre said that the Macomb fight was a robbery but i don't know if you maybe you guys um over uh are conflating both things i don't know or both guys conflating progre with uh sir simonson all right well i don't know um also the yeah, other thing no, I'm, yeah i'm trying to find it right there i don't know maybe i because somebody um yeah, somebody sent it to me. I, I might be getting a fighter wrong. Somebody tweeted out one of the fighters. It might not have been Shakur. I apologize. That's all right. You have to but apologize. Some fighter, you have to apologize. Yeah, one of them tweeted out um, robbery. Just that, That's all they put. Yeah, I think that was Pro Gray talking about the Barbosa McComb fight, which I didn't watch all of it, uh, but I did see Barbosa having a oh, heck no, of a time. Oh, no, it was Shakur. I'm sorry, guys. 14 Whoa. hours ago. Robert no, no, no! You got to send me that triple up uh, with three explanation marks. Here, let me send it to, to be, you. Uh, to be, uh, I think he was talking about the McCombs fight because it was before that, before Ryan and um, oh, okay, Evan Haney got in the ring. Okay, maybe that's what yeah. it was. Okay, that's that sounds right because it was fourteen hours ago, so that would sound right. Um, Jimmy, uh, let me see. Jimmy almost oh, well, got a suit okay. here. <laughs> well, actually, the people responding, the people responding to him are using the copy box. Of Haney, um, oh, unless he's saying robbery was in the mix with that Max DeLuca, right? Could he mean that when well, that let me one see, judge let me see, was let me giving see. him one twelve, one twelve? No, I think the timelines is just it was before the um they got in the ring because the next tweets are saying he's saying like oh Ryan looks actually ready and oh someone he won that's that right, round. Eleven forty eight, eleven forty eight. Unless that's what he was predicting a robbery, I don't know, but 
Okay. Hey, Jimmy, what's right is right. You I understand what up. I'm talking about? Yes, you're right. <laughs> Jimmy. But not our Jimmy. The kid was a punk over there. But not our Jimmy. I mean, Jimmy, come on, man. You almost got a suit, man. <laughs> yeah, well, I was going to have to call uh, Rayful Shapiro up. Get some representation for you. All right, uh, fellas, uh, let, we got a phone call going out here, so don't forget to hit the like, hit the like, hit the like, hit the like. It really helps us out. 214, you're on the air. 214, what's on your mind? What's up, BDA? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. 214, what's up? Man, you already know what it is. It's inevitable. It's D Block, D Town, D City, D Ville, Baltimore. <laughs> <laughs> what's up, D Block? <laughs> You know, I feel so good right now. I called this a long time ago. I know King Rod was going to go in there and beat the brakes out of Devin Haney. And I love it. And now people are starting to push the narrative that Devin Haney was a weak fighter. I'm going to tell you like this. Last year, Skank to Wank Davis did everything possible to make my youngin' with his King Rod, deplete him of his energy, deplete him of his power, and this is what you get today. I can't wait for King Rod to go up to Tank Davis and knock his ass out again. Oh. What, what I say again is he's going to knock him out multiple times. And when that fight happens, believe me, it's going to be a different type of dog fight. D-Block, D-Town, D-C, D-Ville, Baltimore stand up. All right, there you go, man. Hey, D-Block coming in uh, with, a, with a quick one there, man. Pop, 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 pop. And then a uh, five-punch combo, and then he moves. Pivots away. Shout out to D Block for uh, calling in. Hopefully, he calls back on the next episode. And um, don't forget to hit the like, fellas. Hit the like, hit the like, hit the like. It really helps us out. Speaking of that, uh, people now, say, you know, they, they, there are some people that are saying that Haney was trash. I mean, again, I'm not saying he was trash, but I did say he, we did try to warn people here that he was being overrated. Um, that being said, I want to get your thoughts on this. Um, Vinny Paz. The rapper, not the boxer, Vinny Paz, the, you know, he's a big boxing fan. He had this to say about Haney. He says, Devin Haney lost two of his last three fights, both by wide margin. Both had wonky scorecards, although at the very least the right guy won. Don't at me and stop tweeting about this kid and his mealy-mouthed father. He's Jeff Lacey 2.0 minus the power. Is that a fair assessment hey. of Devin Haney? Is, is he Jeff Lacey 2.0? Jeff Lazy had knockouts, I so I don't think so. Well, he addressed that. He didn't he say without the power? Yeah. <laughs> oh my bad. I'm stupid as fuck. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's um yeah no. Listen, I mean, you can't get past that. It's that's what happens when people get past the robbery, and it was a robbery. Lomachenko won that fucking fight. So if you took look at that at the reality of it, instead of okay, you go. To go by the because it says it in box track doesn't matter. I don't give a fuck what it says in box track. I saw him lose that fight, so in my mind, he's lost two of his last three fucking fights. In the last one, he got beat the fuck up. Period. Now, yeah, you're you're right there, Jimmy. Um, I I don't know, man. It's it's Jeff Lacey was he had one title, I believe. At least Devin Haney was the lineal champ. A one sixty-eight. I mean, excuse me, at lightweight. So it is what it is with right. that. But um, but I do agree. He was big. look. It's people have to remind themselves. Uh, wake up, some people in the media and all that. They like, they try to they, they try to prop up these guys and uh, make them out to be as if they're these big stars and you know pound for pound guys. And they're not, man. You you have guys like Uzik and Inoue, Bivol, um, uh, Crawford. And they're the ones that get ignored for the most part. It's these other guys who have larger followings. Exactly. They're the ones that are propped up, and it's you know it's a little, uh, it's a little ridiculous if you ask me. And you and I and you should really underscore the thing about the progress because I understand that a lot of so-called reputable media was calling that a 50-50 fight. Where here on the channel we're like. No, man, actually, he should probably win this going away. I said, I wouldn't be surprised if he pitched a shutout. <laughs> He's fighting a guy who's 36, inactive, a prodder with slow feet. I said, He's going to pick, and he's, and he's taller than him with longer reach. He's going to pick him apart. You know, when are you in a decision? I never gave Progress a shot in that fight. He looked even worse than I thought, but it is what it is. So it's like, 
because that name, Progress, another one everybody put on this pedestal that didn't deserve it. So he's got his fucking, he's, you got this guy put on a pedestal through a robbery, an overrated win in fucking Progress, and now it is what it is. So again, his confidence, and again, he knows in his heart he lost against Lomachenko. So his confidence has got to be really fucking shaky right now, especially about going up to 147. Imagine fucking him getting hit by Virgil Ortiz. I know <laughs> that Virgil's gone to 154 now, but he just was at 147. Can you even imagine that? Yeah, nah, man. I mean, geez, Luis. Um, but but by the way, Devin Haney's saying now, well, he said it 10 hours ago that uh, there's nothing broken, nothing fractured, which, hey, we'll take him at his word, but uh, there's certainly a, a large oh, amount shit. of swelling. What was that? Yeah, I don't buy that. I think his jaw's broken. You don't swell in that region. And when he was talking, he was opening his jaw. He could open it a little, but I'm sure that shit was fractured. I would have yeah, my life. The swelling the way he had it. And the fact he didn't go to the post presser. Why? Because he went in an exactly. ambulance. He had to get his exactly. jaw wired. He had to yeah, go to the hospital. True. Yeah, if we don't hear from him in on video talking, speaking, then it's, yeah, it's, he's probably had his uh, jaw wired. I mean, it's a, uh, he was he was dipping down and getting hit with right hands, and although they weren't, they were imperfect right hands from Ryan Garcia. Nevertheless, he packs quite a wallop on those shots, especially on the downward arc. So he might have uh, fractured it that way. Uh, we got a phone call here. Uh, let's go to it. Uh, three two three, you're on the air. Three two three, what's on your mind? Oh, oh can you hear? Can you guys hear me? Yes, three two three. What's up? Uh, can you hear? Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you, man. Hello. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, no, his jaw is definitely broke. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. I've 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 boxed out the MMA. I've broken jaws. Oh. He, the reason why he ain't gonna see Devin for a minute is he might have the Kanye West mouth wired shut. You know what I mean? <laughs> Straight up, like because like I ain't even gonna lie to you. He, he's spitting through the wire right now. He's gonna be eating nothing but good soup for a couple of weeks. I'm just gonna oh, let on. you know. You know what I'm saying? He he's sipping Campbell's soup right now as we speak. You know what I'm saying? They they put they put his frosted flakes. They put the meat in there. They put mashed potatoes in the blender, and he's sucking through a straw. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, man! You gotta feel bad. I sympathize for the guy. I, I've I've met people boxers who cool, have gone through that. No, and... no, fuck all that. I'm a black man, and I don't sympathize for shit. I'm from Los Angeles, <laughs> California. Right. Let me tell you something, brother. I'm gonna say just like just like this. You don't don't write a check. Your ass can't cash. Okay. Let me tell you something. His dad is the reason why nobody likes him. If it was just him and him just talking, it might not be just as bad. But I call him now. His name is not Bill Haney. His name is Forever William. Sir William Haney, okay? Because you're not Bill no more, bro. You're William. You took your pills. You went away. You know what I'm saying? Let that nigga go. You know what I'm saying? Just, just let your... Just give him to, like, Floyd. Back to Floyd. Floyd, say, I'm sorry, Floyd. All right? Shut the fuck up. Because you made it so bad for your son that everybody wanted to see that. We just wish it was pink. I'm Me, personally... But no, but you know what? This is what I do sympathize for. Happy it wasn't pink because fucking fucking straw and, and and broken jaw. He probably would be in ICU right now, straight up. We'd be praying for <laughs> a pray for, for it'd be hashtag pray for Devin, straight up. <laughs> if it was pink, Maybe, okay. <laughs> like so, like so, like we have to realize this. You were gifted titles, okay, a title, right? You were gifted Cambosis. Who is Cambosis? I don't even know. So what? Who did you really be? Prograde? An uh, old man? Like, I'm telling you to myself. And I, but, but I, I think I could be prograde. You see the slow as shit, right? You know what I mean? You head on the line. You don't know, duck and dodge nothing. They, they've, been, they've been fast food feeding Devin Haney to make him what? That's why Tank said before, I don't even want these belts. Why do you think when after Tank beat Ryan A, exchange numbers, I guarantee Tank told him, Fuck those belts. Think about this. Why do I want all this undisputed shit when I got to play sanctioning fees? I want all my money because I got to pay my team, my trainer. I got to pay this and pay the promoters. Now I got to pay the sanctioning fees. Fuck them belts. I'm about to go just like Jake Paul and make all the money. Fuck your couch. I don't want your belts. So that's what he said. I'm about to because what Devin is known for. Devin walk around at 168 like on a on a on a this regular day. So when you come down to 135 and 140, then you rehydrate to 160 something. Okay, well, guess what? Fuck 
the weight. I'm going to come in at 143 and come in the same size as you and with the same height, and now what you're going to do. See, the thing was, Ryan, his left hand is powerful when it's literally, like, right in front of him, right? Like, he, he swings right at his own chin. So the tank is so small that he was missing over the top. If you look at the fight, he kept trying to swing, but he was over the head. And Tank, you know, all I got to do is get low, like Mike Tyson used to do, get low and come back up. Boom. Now with Haney, Haney got a big ass head, big ass chin, big ass nose. You know, you know what I'm saying? Oh, my defense is impeccable. Shut the fuck up. No, it's not. We saw that. You ain't got no chin. So he could not get out of that way of that left hook. It was too fast, and it was right on the line of where he is, eye to eye. Boom. That's where Ryan is great at because, that, like I said, that left comes right across his own face. So if you are at the same height as him, it's going to connect. He couldn't connect with, with Tank. He did connect with Tank, but Tank could take a punch. Devin well, I mean, there was also no the... Chance. He got all the chance. Ryan was way there... drained, bro. Stop the cap, bro. I got to stop you right there. We let you go on for a minute, dude. You laid in Davis too much, bro. Oh, no. There's stop that, it. There's it asterisk around it, bro. Come on. So, so if you if you think Ain't Davis no is that bad, why, I, I why don't you encourage that rematch? Why don't you they encourage the rematch at 143, then, if he's that bad? What did he come in at? He was way oh, drained, but he came so in at So you don't want to see the rematch? No, 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 I'm not saying that. No, what I'm saying, what I'm asking you is this. What did he come in the night of the fight? Not before when he weighed in. What did he come in? Because, you know, you tell the, me, the bro. weight calls go both ways. You tell ways. me, bro. You can't say, no, no, the weight calls, the weight calls. Oh, I don't want to hear that ways, shit, correct? bro. I don't want to hear that shit, bro. I don't want to hear that shit. All right, well, listen, can I, can I say this? Well, how, how tall is can I say this? Can I say this? Because we're going to move on to another phone call here. But I, I suspect Bucho is going to be doing an open lines this week. He usually does open lines midweek shows when they're after a big fight. So if you guys want to keep talking, I, I suspect that's going to be a big point of contention in those shows. So if you guys want to jump in and, and debate that there, you're certainly welcome to do so. But in the meantime, caller, we got to move on here. But uh, thank you for your call and call back next time, right? Okay, hey, man, can I, say, can I say one thing? I don't say thank you, man. I love your channel and everything, you. you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm from Los Angeles, so I'm, I'm, I am black, but I got Mexican people in my family. So, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, so I'm all about, you know, the unity about that. But I'm just going to say, Tanks whoops everybody ass over and over and over. Wait, did you say you, you, got, know, you got Mexican real. people? Did you say you have Mexican what, family members? Like Yes, yes, I am. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry to hear that, man. My sympathies. All right, well, listen, thank you for your caller, caller, and uh, we'll <laughs> catch you on the next one, man. All right, but thank you for everybody else. Yeah, we'll see about That's what's that, up, man. Bro. I, I don't see how, I don't see what has to do with the Mexicans in your family, though, dude. That was... Hey, by the way, he yeah, had, you see... He, he had some... Oh, sorry, sorry, go no. ahead, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead, Jimmy, because I'm, I'm talking over people. No, I... I Oh no! It's, I was gonna say he had he had some good analogies in the beginning. He had some funny analogies. He was fucking giving it to fucking, and and I like that he did notice that it is Haney. It's not it's not Haney. It's his old man. Like he literally, you, I, I, that's another thing. Haney's like, dude, you're not doing me any favors. You're not making me a fan favorite because you're obviously lying in the shit. And I and I really do believe his father was behind that fucking uh, the thing that if it was any other fighter, if it was Mickey Goss, I mean, if it was. Garcia would have said it. Aloma would have said it. I ain't losing no black boy. Come on. Come yeah, on. yeah, yeah. People, people you know, forget would have been about on that. CNN. People forget about that. It. It's not just the holding. It's not just a Loma thing. It's he said he said that about during the pandemic, and that really pissed a lot of people off. And you you can go around saying that type of stuff. And uh, like you know, I didn't take offense to it obviously because I'm not not a white guy. I'm Mexican. But even if he would have said about Mexicans, I would have been like, okay, that's a distasteful comment. But it's not the end of the world. But whatever. But but other people won't take it that way some people will really get will get really offended by that and that's one of the big reasons why people dislike them so i mean you you it is what right. it is man. and it's not like i'll never lose to an american you know just something but just to label it under the race to a white boy yeah. like, and then laughing smugglingly laughing while you have the general talk that shit dev cheering him on you know what i mean the fucking the black supremacist oh, cheering he, him he on so big. It just he wasn't was good sick last night. Topics. He was sick last night, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was he? he was sick yeah, last was. night, Jimmy. <laughs> it, Blocking it, yeah, people. people. Somebody sent me like an eleven minute clip. He must have blocked thirty three people. Your ass is blocked. Your ass is blocked. That's how he <laughs> deals with fucking criticism. I mean, I've seen. Oh, and he I've, kept talking had... about what he would have done if he was there, and he could actually. He held the stuff that was going on in his mind. How savage he would have been towards people 
for of you were cheering for Ryan. I, we've had uh, waves of people after certain fights uh, come in here and troll us. We don't we don't ban them unless it starts uh, going way out of line. But other than that, hey, t talking a little bit of smack, hey, send me them a game. Don't ban people for that. But then again, people can run their channel uh, whichever way they want. I don't besmirch them for that. Um, we're going to go to another phone call here. Let's go to 510. 510, you're on the air. 510, what's on your mind? Hey, what's up, Jimmy? What's up, Recognize? Um, uh, I just want to make this comment real quick. Hey, you're going to let that dick sucker just, like, boot people from the Discord? Because that's what that fucking bitch did on uh, Friday. So you're going to let that slide? Just, I just want to be on record. I just want to prove a point. Uh, well, you got to be more specific. I don't know what you're talking about. Never sobers. What about me? Was Always it? coping. That fucking thing. What, what, what do you mean what about you, dude? That's what you did. I like how... This is what I love about you guys, right? The canalitas... Uh, canalita when you call in, you... Hey, bro, if you're going to call in and talk about me, you better say what's up to me first. If you're going to call in and talk about me, you better say what's up to me first. Don't be ignoring me in BDA. Legendary La Lizard. Do you understand? Yeah, that's your mom. That's your mom. Anyways, uh, so hey, but BDA, you gonna okay. let that slide or what? You, you, that's cool with you. That that's like uh, normal behavior for you. Normal response to uh, uh, to when people talk shit to you. Well, you gonna let me answer, or are you gonna keep talking like a maniac? No, go ahead. Yeah, no. Well, that, obviously there's a delay. I'm not trying to cut you off. I just want to get no, an answer. Well, it's not that obvious because we never know with you, man. No, no offense, booty juice, but sometimes you you tend to be a uh, okay. Well, well, I just made the statement now. I'm gonna let you talk. Go ahead. You tend to be very verbose, is what I'm saying. First of all, I don't know the details of what you're talking about, so I can't comment on that. You, you, you're assuming that I know whatever it is that you're talking about. I don't even know if you're making things up or if you're imagining things. Not, not that you do that, but I mean, I'm no, just saying. He, he, he booted another guy, too, with some guy named Carlos off the BDA show. Like, at first, uh, this guy came in, because I was in mid sentence responding to some this fucking bitch, Carlos? right? And then um right right then and there I got booted from the from the from the fucking server. He's a guy you made him a mod so he can like boot people like that. He can mute people, server mute them. That's how which that server? works. Oh, sorry, sorry. Just just to clarify, which server are you speaking of? The the Friday show, the BDA, the Friday the call in, okay. uh, you know where well, people usually call in. Okay, well I got yeah, your version. Lines. I well, I got your I got your version. Now let me get Sobers' version because I don't know what you guys are talking about. Sobers, go ahead. Could you offer any clarification on this uh i can't because i don't know what he's talking about either he sounds like he's crying like a little fucking baby right now to me. yeah no you don't i mean you're a salty bitch man you're a salty bitch like i love how a guy with booty in his name gets you so riled up you guys are like low self-esteem bitches man you low self-esteem bitches like that you're just proving my point so i appreciate it thank you i just want to hear that because he's obviously lying because he booted somebody else some guy named carlos that jumped in right after Ooh. i got fucking muted and he did the same thing and the guy made the same exact comment <laughs> like hey this guy booted me from the server and, and then this bitch said like oh but but for me i couldn't i couldn't rejoin the the, the writer link but whatever but uh, but whatever man all right it's good I just wanted hey, to say this. Cholo no cholo no um, I'm just, I'm just, I can I just say one thing? Can I just say one thing? I'm laughing because I'm imagining, can, can I just say one You're thing? I'm laughing. Monkey. Can I what just say one thing? About? Can I just say one thing? I'm laughing because I'm, I'm imagining if somebody's tuning into this show for the first time ever and they just tune into that part. It's like, yeah, he booted Carlos from the server, man. That ain't right. He booted, who, who the fuck is Carlos? Who the fuck is Carlos? What are they talking about? Why are they making a big deal out of this? But whatever, no, BDA, I'm, at, hey, BDA, I'm well, asking no, the same thing. Who the fuck, fuck is, is Carlos? Who are you talking about, I don't know, man. I don't know exactly who that individual was. Evidently, I don't know Carlos... who that individual was, but this guy called him Carlos. He said, oh, uh, I think his name is Carlos because, like, um, I don't know. He was just some weird shit, but that's kid shit, man. I like right. how you bitches say you don't get offended, but you're still offended. You're that offended that you're gonna mute me and then uh, kick me off the server, man. That's what's up, dude. Yeah, yeah. You guys are wait, you guys wait, got wait. big balls, huh? You guys got big cojones, huh? So now you got wait, wait, wait. Now so you, you, Carlos, the 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 the, the royalty guy got booted, and you got booted as well. I got booted before him, yeah. He, he came after me, like, maybe, I want to say, 10, 15 minutes after. But point being, you don't got to address it, uh, you know, or not. I just wanted to prove a point. Because well, regardless, you, you know, you're going to let this bitch die. It's the same thing you, when, when you, let you, this guy, you let this guy say faggot all the time. You're worried about YouTube TOS, right? But this guy says faggot all the time. Oh, he calls hey, people oh, faggot, oh, 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 what, whether it's on, oh, on, oh, on this show, watch your mouth. Whether, whether it's an open on Friday. No, but you, but you let him, hey, hey, stop being funny. I'm being real right now. I'm being, I'm being honest right now. You let this guy say that. Are you being mad real? Are you being mad real right now? You're, you're like, 
when and when you let uh, when other guys say you're like oh and I look dude I call in and I respect the TOS I understand YouTube's a bitch I'm not I'm not for the woke shit um, you in the hood I, I'm gonna try to be respectful for the channel but like I said moving forward I mean you kind of show me true colors so that I mean I said so I want to prove a point about that. All right. Well, you, I mean, you certainly, you said you didn't care about it, but we certainly spent five minutes talking about it. So you want to talk about the fight or something else? No, that, that's not what that, no, that's not what that means. No, because I'm proving a point, though. This is real shit. I'm proving a All point. All right, we get uh, it. You, you guys always point. fucking, look, right. you can you talk, you can point. talk shit about me, whatever the fuck you hey, want. Man. But hey, man, you're hey, not letting me fight. Hey. You're not being fair, buddy. Do you not call yourself, question, question. do you not call yourself the, the boxing debate arena? So, well, wait a so how is this debate going to take place when you well, look okay, okay, but, 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 being fair, no, unfair. This is, oh, I just want to. I, I, I was just going to press you to prove the point, but yeah, yeah I mean, don't don't hey. say don't say something you're not, dude. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Hey, dude, I'll fight, say whatever. Hey, like, hey, I'll say I'll say oh, whatever I want, man. I say whatever I want because it's a boxing debate arena. You have to debate <laughs> that point. Show. So don't tell me. Don't tell hey, me I'm I can't say hey, this or I say tiers, that. Though, the different tiers, though. I'm and you got to stop getting emotional, man. You got to stop. Listen, listen. I can just imagine. I can just imagine him at the truck stop talking on his cell phone like a maniac screaming about Carlos Car imagine the people passing by him <laughs> Carlos you, you booted Carlos I'm just pressing you Ben I'm just pressing you man because you call yourself the box in the bed arena people must be thinking what the fuck is wrong with this guy the, Carlos I'm making a point I'm taking a stand against the box in the bed arena I gotta move on man uh, if you're not gonna talk boxing we gotta move on here Booty Juice because we got other people calling in and please also try to remain calm because you, you're you know you're getting two out of uh pocket here and that's not good for the blood pressure i'm just trying to look out for you here a little bit i can still see hey, he's, he's still talking too. here look at that hey hey booty loose want to go suck carlos's dick bro <laughs> come on come on come on come on no 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 hold on, hold on. No. let's get back to hey, let's get back hey, to but that's your no. job hey but that's let's your get, job that's right, your job let's just shut your Legend, fucking mouth legendary lot lizard i, I, I <laughs> I'm, all, I'm all for people. I'm all for people having equal opportunities. So oh, you know, uh, for for work. So hey, man, go ahead, have fun. All I right. hear you're doing a good job about that. All right, we gotta move you're on. We gotta move thousand. on. You, 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 you rent through your five minutes. 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 Shout out to Mr. Booty Juice. I gotta give it up to him. He always makes it entertaining. But good, good lord, it's it's a Sunday, man. We we can't have. And then I gotta press the censure button every other two seconds. I'm I'm sorry, I can't do that. But uh, shout out to Booty uh, Loose. Um, excuse me, Booty Juice. Booty Juice. I did try that. I'm trying to. No, I'm trying to call him by his correct name, man, because I can see he's fired up over this. I don't want him to get more fired up. I'm not doing this on purpose. All right, fellas, don't forget to hit the like, hit the like, hit the like, hit the like. It really helps us out. Let's go. <laughs> this is insane, man. It's an insane. Yeah, did he uh, even bring up the fight? Well, if you recall, I wanted to get to it, but he he wasted his five minutes on that, and 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 he did call in on Friday, I think. He said he didn't give a shit about the fight, so I can't imagine he would. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get to another phone call here. Let's get to uh, 210. 210, you on the air. 210, what's on your mind? Damn, how do I follow that up? Hey, sorry, man. <laughs> one more point. One more point. <laughs> uh, one more point. Um, but but wait, wait, real, real quick. But the funny thing is, man, that I, I'm, I'm just imagining his reaction after you hang up on him. He's probably like punching the air right now out in the street, man. It's, it's crazy. But I, hey, come on! I let him go. I let but, uh, him. I let him talk, man. I let him talk, but he wouldn't get to the point. I mean, at some point you gotta. No, I gotta no, hey, no, no, no. I just, I just thought it was funny. No, but hey, but one more point, man. Uh, the unsung hero, man. I'm happy for Derek James after fucking the fuckery Spence, you know, put on him, and you know, like he was, he he's been in the mud lately, man. So it was good to see Derek James, and I'm rewatching the fight right now. And the round seven, man. I, I, another point was. If Ryan got hurt like that, Harvey would have waved it off. I mean, he that, that should have been three knockdowns. I just watched it right now again. And, yeah, man, he, he called him flip. Man, he, he should have had three knockdowns that, that round. But that's all I got to say, Referee man. Referee saved him in that James. round, brother. I agree, bro. We were going crazy yeah. when we were watching yeah, it live. Yeah, that's right. Saved him in that round. Yeah, but that, that, that's all. I just wanted, I just I forgot to shout out Derek James, man. He's a cool guy. He's real cool in person, man. So uh, it was good to see him get the win. He needed this. He needed this. That's right. Yeah, you're right, man. You're right. All right, man. Thank you for your call. And uh, call back next time, man. Take it easy out there. Yeah, Derek James, he's been through a rough patch. He he got uh, he suffered from the curse of the trainer of the year. 
uh, 2023 was not a good year for him. But, you know, being a trainer is hard enough in boxing. Uh, but he got a lifeline from Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia really does help people out. They should call him uh, the Victor uh, Victorville Angel because he really is saving people. He says he's going to save the kids next. He's, he's going to do like James, Jim Caviezel in that movie there where he's saving uh, kids from uh, slavery. So good for him. Um, also, I want to give a shout out to everybody who's donated via the Super Chat. Uh, to, uh, yeah, via the Super Chat so far. And I want to give a shout out to um starboy5 who said i got a good book for bill haney it's called talking for dummies because the brother ain't talking a whole lot after the fight oh <laughs> yeah he sort of lost his voice after yesterday that's for sure shout out to starboy5 for his contribution really appreciate it and shout out to carlos roque roque for his contribution with the super chat he says what did i do and what do you mean by you people LOL. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, is this the guy that... Car no, I don't think that's the Carlos. Now I'm intrigued. Now I want to know who the fuck Carlos is, man. He seems to... He sounds like an important person. If we Carlos. spend so much time. <laughs> Carlos. He's got the... Jimmy, what's that in the background, man? Is somebody hollering? No, that, I heard that too. Is that just getting picked up? Does it sound like a phone call? That was I from know. you, man. I'll, I'll, I'll mute it. What the yeah, fuck? Yeah, I know. I think it sounded like my phone was picking it up. I don't even know what the fuck that was. It sounded oh, like an, it sounded like it it's sounded like you delayed. were in the middle of an it sounded like you were in the middle of an urban shootout or something. <laughs> yeah. It was like I was picking up a fucking I was like, what the hell is that? I was hey, sitting hey, here Jimmy, in the living room with everything off. <laughs> Jimmy, it's not like you were in, in the ghettos of Brockton. Ah, come on. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> That was weird, man. That was weird. <laughs> unknown, unknown in the chat says that was Bill's inner monologue. <laughs> hey, that's a good one. <laughs> that's, that's, what the fuck? Uh, <laughs> hey, man, the phone calls. No, what, keep you know what Bill Haney was like? He went into Bill Haney went into the dressing room after the fight. You ever? And you know in that movie, um, Boys in the Hood, after what's his name, Cuba Junior's friend is shot. And he's covered in blood. He goes in the house and he starts Just swinging in the air. Mad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a sad scene, man. Come on. John Singleton. It's John Singleton movies. You got to give it up to John Singleton. Um, fellas, let's get to another phone call here. They're still pouring in here. Let's go to 917. 917, you're on the air. 917, what's on your mind? Hey, how's it going, guys? What's up, man? Wow, what a fight. Ryan Garcia is in an amazing position right now. Amazing position to fight pretty much anyone he wants to at 140, 147. Um, I really like the Fedora fight he was talking about. I could totally see that being a big event and doing really well after Fedora's recent fight and after this fight. Two upsets. Um, and then make them fight each other, that'd be awesome. What do you guys think of that? Guys, what do you think? That, uh, that's like three weight classes up. That's, that might be a bit much. Three classes? Yeah, that's two weight classes from one, what, Mickey, I mean, uh, Garcia going up to, yeah. yeah. I would that, like to see Ryan show. Garcia, I would like to see Ryan Garcia fight, like, guys like Subriel, Tio, uh, Tio Fimo, um, I don't know, maybe in the future, Walter Welterweight. You know, I don't know if to fight Fondora right now. I mean, I don't know what weight class they will fight at. So, you know, he's at 154, guys like 6'5 or whatever. Um, I think there's big fights for him. You know, him, him not making 140 doesn't mean he can't make 140. I just think that, like Jimmy said... He wasn't training as disciplined, but if he if he disciplined himself, I think he could make 140 and then rehydrate uh, comfortably. Uh, somebody told me that um, uh, that unofficially, uh, Devin Haney and him, uh, Devin Haney came in at 164, and he came in at 162, uh, Ryan. So I don't know if that's true or not, but if it is true, it just goes to show you that. <clears throat> he could be, he, he could make 143 with a little bit more discipline he could make 140 and come in the ring comfortable is what i'm trying to say so he can fight guys i rather i I'd much rather him see see him fight subriel tio uh these are guys that i give him a good chance of beating you know i think subriel is my favorite out of all of them but he, he has the style 
to to upset a guy like Subriel. In my opinion, he can knock him out because Subriel uh, comes forward. Caller, what do you think about that? that? Caller, what do you think about that? Yeah, so I mean, no, he could make one forty. That's for sure. We know he can because he's done it. And like you said, three pounds. He didn't look uh, drained at one forty three. So he looked like he could have squeezed three more pounds out if he wanted to. I just think he looks amazing when he doesn't cut weight. Like just. I mean, he seems strong, you know. And 147 yeah, for me would be, I guess, the magic number. But I wouldn't mind seeing him at 140 either. But I'm just ready to see this dude fight new people besides the same people we, we all talk about. I feel like this fight brought some excitement. Like, Haney losing might have been the best option because now that he lost, it's – the whole Mayweather uh, blueprint thing that's out of the picture now. Um, his fight should be more exciting too moving forward because now he's already got the loss in his record. He, maybe he'll start to, you know, take more, more risk each fight that he that he takes now moving forward or he's not going to be afraid to get out of his shell. And there you go, man. I just think this was good for boxing overall. Yeah, man. We'll, I mean, we'll see what happens on the long term. Uh, you, uh, I'm, I'm not going to make any decisions now but you could be right you could be right it was certainly exciting that's for sure all right well listen caller man thank you for your and call this, and uh, this uh this kind of proof i just want to add one more thing though I, the only loss ryan had was when he was dehydrated and not allowed to uh gain a certain amount of weight when he fought tank so looking back on that if it wasn't for that fight let's say the tank fight never happened everyone most people would have probably thought Devin versus Ryan would have been a 50-50 fight. I think the only reason we got fooled, quote-unquote, or a lot of people got fooled, uh -huh. was because of the tank fight, just thinking, like, oh, he's vulnerable, like, he's, he's not that guy. But if that I fight agree. never happened, I mean, he got, he has pretty good uh, defeats on his record. You know, like, we, a lot of people just forgot about that shit. And they also forgot about the fact that, okay, yeah, he's a TikToker, but the guy's been boxing since seven years old he has an actual amateur background it's that's not true. like he's a that's jake true. paul just coming in like oh i'm famous like let me fight someone no this guy's been doing this you're absolutely so right caller. You're, 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 you're absolutely you right caller caller you're absolutely right and uh yeah some people yeah it's that that the uh, thing uh the tank fight hypnotized a lot of people and uh, that well first of all thank you for your call man we're gonna move on though but uh, great points and uh call back next time ramen take it easy yeah he would knock but, out he would knock uh, out jake paul as big as Jake Paul is, you knock him out. Yeah, but but can I just well maybe I don't. Um, I think no, I, I think you're right. I think you're right. Out. Yeah, I think you're right because of the stamina issues. But I, I'll say this, man. I've heard people say, man, Tang whooped, Haney, uh, Ryan Garcia. I mean, other than that, it's like the same thing here with the Haney fight. There were the two knockdowns, one of which ended the fight. It was a body shot. I didn't see much of a whooping. I didn't see Garcia beat up. I didn't see him getting schooled. He had trouble ca catching uh, uh, Tank Davis, but so did Tank Davis. I didn't see Tank Davis uh, teeing off on the dude. It was a very lame, um, uneventful fight. So I don't understand. And, and that was a dehydrated Ryan Garcia. So it's it's to me, this looks bad for, for Tank Davis. I don't understand how people can try to, are trying to construe this as some sort of win for Tank Davis. Um, let's go to another phone call here, fellas. Let's go to 754. 754, you're on the air. 754, what's on your mind? Uh, is that me? Or? Yeah, it's you. Yes. Oh, okay. So I'm. I'm just my first time watching you guys. You guys sound like good and stuff. I just want to know what your thoughts. By the way, the whole fight. Like, what do you think about it? How like Ryan just you know beat Tank, and like what do you guys think about overall? Like, what are your initial thoughts? Do you think that um Ryan would initially beat Tank now, or like looking back at it, or what do you guys think? Just your overall thoughts of the night. Well, I'll say that I don't know if Garcia fully hydrated can beat Tank Davis but I wanted to see it back last year I would have liked to have seen both guys at their best last year or at, at least Ryan Garcia rather at his best and it didn't happen could could things change in a rematch after this Haney fight I still think Garcia would get set up with something but I don't, I'm not sure if the I don't know if the, the him being fully hydrated might allow him to take the shot I don't know I'd like to see it just to, to clear things up but uh, Ryan Garcia has a lot of options now. That's for sure. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what do you think is next for Devin Haney? Like, what do you think he's going to do forward? Do you think a rematch is good? Like, what's the next move for him? I think a, a rematch could be... Uh, I think he could make some adjustments, more adjustments than, than, than Ryan Garcia could in a rematch. But at the same time, I, I don't know how he st would handle the power. Still, he couldn't handle it. That, that's a big psychological thing that are going on. And, and you know, it's, it's a type of fight where... If it would have been a one-punch knockout, that's it for Ryan Garcia. It's like, oh, yeah, I can still see Haney outboxing him. But he wasn't. For all 12 rounds, he was... There was one round or two rounds where he would outbox Garcia, and then he would get caught. Then two more rounds where he would sort of do well against Garcia, and then he would get caught again. It's, I, I, it doesn't seem like he can get away from that power. So, uh, But then again, like some guys have been saying, caller on this panel, uh, maybe Garcia shouldn't give him a, a rematch. Because Haney is averse to giving other people rematches, so... Why should Garcia do the, the same? I mean, why should he? Why should he? Gonna give him a rematch, PDA. It's got to be all under Ryan Ryan's uh, terms, uh, liking. Right. He's got to be whatever whatever Ryan wants. If he wants to fight him at a catch weight, they fight mm -hmm. at a catch weight of one forty three, one forty five, whatever the deal is. Because, like I said, if it's true about the unofficial weight. It goes to show you, bro. He's he's just as big as him. He just don't have the power. The most important thing in boxing. I'm so happy this fight happened the way it did. Never yeah. ever count uh, out the most important thing. It's called power. Power. The ability to hurt somebody with a punch they don't see coming. Caller. Yeah, yeah, I got that. All right. Thank you guys for that. I got to go now, but thank you guys for letting me be on the show. You guys seem like awesome people. And yeah, thank you. I'll see you guys, right? Thank you, man. Thank you for your compliment. All I'll say is uh, looks can be deceiving. We're not that uh, great people. But thank you for your call and the compliment, man. The call back next time. Well, I'm fantastic, but thank you, caller. I mean, hey, listen. Don't don't see that's the, that's the snake in Recognize. He's, he's saying, oh, I'm the best. I'm this. I'm such a nice guy. And then before you know it, he's choking you from behind. But listen, the point is this. Uh... I, by the way, recognize. Speaking of recognize, <laughs> you guys can see it, but on the Discord, his avatar now is uh, Ryan Garcia on a under a crimson filter. <laughs> Looks very badass. All of us, all of us on now. Ryan Garcia is on uh, 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 recognize his avatar. Um, that's right. I pay. I pay homage. You know, that's what I'm doing. There you go. Blood homage. I pay homage. Om homage, homage, right? homage, yeah, blood homage. Yeah, yeah. homage. I said homage. homage. <laughs> homage. Um, uh, what else can we say about this fight? I mean, it's um, Ryan Garcia. Um, I, it was very, it was very cathartic for me, bro. <laughs> cathartic. What's that? Uh, release of uh, a lot of pent up emotions. No, yeah, I was just copying. I felt like that, an yeah. adrenaline dump watching it, bro. I was, I was BDA asked me about my voice when I when I jumped on the show. It was gone, bro. I was like, "Fuck him up!" Fuck right, right now. Even if I do it right now, bro, I'm gonna start. My shit's gonna start uh hitting the hitting the ceiling. It's going all high. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sobas was going crazy yesterday, boy. Holy shit! But um, uh, real quick, uh, my brother brought up a, a a good fight that he would like to see Ryan Garcia, and then I'll I'll throw it to you guys. He he wanted me to ask you guys, what do you think about him, uh, Ryan Garcia versus a guy like Conor Ben at 147? I think he mm -hmm. might be able to handle him because Conor Ben doesn't look uh, after he got accused of that little he had that little ex situation. You know what I mean? <laughs> His power seems to be gone. That'd be that he good, had. That'd be a good step up. Yeah, I, I'd like that fight because if you're bringing Ben down in weight. Right, and um, I, I think he's a domestic kind of level talent, and it'd be a good test for our guys here. But I kind of have a feeling that to try to get into his good graces, <laughs> his hern, and um, I get, and I think somebody said that there was a they were screaming at a screaming match because he said that he predicted him to quit in his stool. So Haney's not Garcia didn't take that lightly. So they're gonna feed him somebody soft to stay in his good graces, or I think that Garcia might bounce. Well, here's here's my. Go yeah, I, I saw that. I saw. Was that his dad? Um. Um. Uh, Jimmy, that was screaming at fucking uh uh Eddie Hearn. Yes. Yep. Yeah, he was grabbing his dick too. I mean, he wasn't grabbing Eddie Hearn's dick. He was uh, uh, yeah, Garcia's. Yeah, <laughs> Garcia's father was grabbing his own dick. Is like you know, it's like in a 
obscene right, gesture. Right, right. Of what you gonna hey, do? Hey, you know? hey, I, you know all the kidding around that I said about Oscar De La Hoya being uh, Garcia's fucking uh, father. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I I do see the resemblance between Ryan Garcia and his pops. Ah, come on, now you see, now you see it. Now now you now, now that he's in your respect. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but I also wanted to clarify something. Is Teofimo Lopez still fighting Steve Claggett? Claggett? I don't know how you say it in French. Clive, Clive, or whatever. Claggett, Claggett. I, I guess that's how you say it. Did any of you guys catch? Um... Bernard Hopkins screaming Alu Akbar right before the decision at Devin Haney. Well, man, dad. I just asked a question here. What's the fuck? I mean, people, you guys are just oh, walking. Like, hey, yeah, yeah, it's like, hey, BDA, fuck you. Yeah, let's talk about something else. Nah, man, I'm a. <laughs> well, no, first of all, well, okay. We'll go ahead. No, first go of all, ahead. yeah, I did see, I did see Hopkins uh, saying that because, uh, but I don't understand what the patrolling is that because he's a Muslim too. So I, I don't. Understand. I think he's telling him like I'm a real Muslim and you're not. You know, like uh, that, I think that's what he's probably. Oh. Yeah. Okay, the beehive is a he's a remember he's a gangster bro he's a gangster like he you know a lot of people give him some criticism here and there you know he deserves it but that dude is he's the real deal bro well every time they interview him mm -hmm. when i used to be when bernard used to he talks in the third person when bernard used to fight <laughs> nobody could touch bernard it's like all right man where is this going and did they ask I him about the alien their, right? i was the yeah, executioner they, they asked him about ryan versus um <laughs> That's him, Bobby Garcia Haney. He's talking about himself. No, I'm kidding. He didn't do it this time. But um, yeah, but Hopkins was classic guy that went in. He he went into the pen. He came out a Muslim. But uh, contrary to Devin Haney, uh, apparently he is a a. I think he's a full on Muslim. Like no, you know, he doesn't screw around during Ramadan, this and that. Although I did hear right. he divorced. He, he was know. more breaded into it, right? Like he, like you said, he went to prison. I think he did like five years or some shit like that. Uh -huh. And he he probably hung out with 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 a lot of Muslims in there, and you know, whatever. Like he's probably more real to it than than. And, he, than and he's clean, time. right? He's he's like keep keeps his, he's kept his body clean. You know what I mean? He's famous for that. And cause yeah. He probably probably because of his religion too. That probably does a lot for it. And he sees what Devin Haney and his dad are doing, and you know what I mean. And he's probably he looks down on him for it. I know a lot of people from Philadelphia, and they, and, they, and they always and they and like. You know, I got introduced to Bernard Hopkins through these guys. And their, their thing was like, this dude doesn't drink anything. You know, this is when he was fighting. They, you know, he, he doesn't drink. He doesn't do anything. He just yeah, trains. That's what, I've heard. that's what I've heard, too. I mean, Steve <laughs> Kim's talked about it a lot. Um, hey, can I say something about that, too, by the way? Um, uh, yeah, okay. So the reason why I brought up real quick uh, Teofimo Lopez, Steve Claggett is because apparently I don't even know if that fight is official. I know they were talking about it a while back. But let's not forget, too, that Teofimo Lopez had been offered a Ryan Garcia fight. And he decided... No, who, who... Just clarify it. Who was... The, did Garcia refuse a Teofimo Lopez fight or was, was it the other way around? I'm getting confused now with all these narratives. Teofimo, I think after that Josh Taylor fight, he said, oh, Ryan's text me, let's fight. And he's like, ha ha. Yeah, he kind of just laughed like, yeah, whatever. You know what I mean? Like he stay in the back, and uh, he's gonna. He just kind of dismissed it. You know what I mean? But he right. did say he did text him. I thought that had been an offer. The fight that I, I really, you know the fight that I like. Uh, I like Subriel against uh, Liam Paro. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a good one. I Pajaro like that fight, is, uh, man. That's gonna be a good. That's gonna be a good scrap, man. Yeah, Pajaro's a tough guy, man. We'll see what happens there, man. He's a tough southpaw lefty there. I mean, Southpaw Lefty. See, Southpaw yep. Lefty's got me saying his name now. He's a tough Southpaw, that's for sure. <laughs> I, 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 I wanted to bring something up, too. Um, after the fight in the press conference, Ryan Garcia had some choice, and his father, too, had some choice words for Tim Bradley, Paulie Malinaji, Chris Algieri, and Steve Kim. And I'm thinking, listen, Steve Kim never really criticized him. Out of, he was never out of bounds with the criticism. He just said, look, this kid's his priorities are somewhere else. And just because Garcia got the win yesterday doesn't mean uh, Steve Kim was incorrect. Just means that maybe Garcia got it, his act together. But but that's my thing with um, um, Garcia is he needs to st again. This could be he's riding high now, but so was Victor uh, Victor Ortiz after the Berto fight, the first one. He was riding high. He got a Mayweather payday. He's like, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm gonna beat this guy, blah blah blah. And he never did anything afterwards. So Ryan Garcia better stick to the mark, stay focused. Stay I say this BDA. He stays disciplined, and he fights at a weight class that he's comfortable in. And if he stays disciplined, he's got all the tools to be a star. But mm -hmm. it's up to him, bro. It's up to him if he can 
you know, if he could cut the distractions to to a to a point, because as talented as he is, I don't think he's as talented as De La Hoya was. And De La Hoya, oh, no, part, no, 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 we we know that. Yeah, no, De La, know, De La Hoya was. De La Hoya, yeah, on top of was, being uh, as, on top of being as deadly as Ryan Garcia with that left foot, he had the fundamentals down. I mean, that's why he won a gold medal yeah. in the Olympics because he was. Yeah, he, he was on another medal. level. He was on another level. I mean, come on, recognize. Recognize this version of, yes, of Ryan Garcia versus Julio Cesar Chavez. I mean, come on. Yeah, Chavez beats him. I mean, yeah, Chavez right? I mean, just, uh, yeah, Chavez would beat him. But it, it would it would have been a good fight. It would have been a good fight. The, the, the thing is, if he stays stays disciplined, you know, and he can make a weight class, and he and, and 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 basically, like I like I said earlier, he could make one forty. Okay, don't drink. Don't smoke. Just just discipline yourself. It it won't be as excruciating. And then you could then you can you can um fight night. You could come in at the weight that you feel comfortable in, you know, mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and give and, and your discipline, right? So you're gonna fight to to your capabilities. Um, I don't think as as bad as he whooped Devin Haney, he did not fight to his full potential, in my opinion. And if that fight, think about this, right? If that fight was officiated the way it was supposed to be, uh, Devin Haney does not survive that fight. Oh, he doesn't survive. Well, we shall see. We shall see. Um, we got another phone call here. I think it's Booty Juice making his uh, customary second call. Let's go to the phone lines here. Uh -oh. See if he wants to talk boxing. Uh, Booty Juice, you're on the air, man. Yeah, I just wanted to say, this look, man, you're a bitch. You're a disgrace of a man. You're a hypocrite. Um, oh, you're lucky I can't take your fucking head off over here in California. How about this? I propose this. Because I usually don't like beating up on old people, right? But you make it, you know, you're a bitch, so why don't you come over to California? It sounds like Let's you got know, Carlos was dick in your mouth yeah, right now. Why are you talking, Prove to me how much What's of a man you are. Prove to me how much of a man you are. Because you're a bitch. Dude, you, I'm a fan of yours. I hope you're not talking to me. I'm a fan. I like you. Not me, right? Uh, no, I'm not talking to you. No, I'm talking to... Uh, no, I'm talking about BDA. Oh, okay, okay. Wait, wait, what did I do? Oh, okay. No, no, no. What did I do? Hey, recognize your shit. I, I will never disrespect you, dude. Like, you and Jimmy, you guys are like, uh, you, Jimmy, and um, Chief, and uh, Pete, you know, you guys are the goats. You know, I'll never disrespect you. Know you, why, you know why he would never disrespect you, recognize? Because he's sexually attracted to you. I hate to break it to you, man, but uh, oh, come he, on, didn't, he man. didn't get the no, no, he didn't get the nickname Bully Juice out of he didn't get the nickname Bully Juice out of nothing, man. It's because he's uh he likes the guys with a he likes the guys with a deep voice. He likes the guys with a deep voice. Listen to listen to listen to him going crazy. Hold on, let's let's uh, let's listen to what he has to say. Let's let's listen to what he has to say. I'm, I, we're due for a laugh here, a laugh or two. Go ahead, Bully Juice. What's on your mind? Yeah, you keep laughing, bitch, but I just exposed you as being a fucking bitch. You just talk. It's the same thing with the Crawford and uh, and what happened with the Crawford and Canelo shit when when the potential fight was happening. I told you to put five five hundred of your fucking Canadian dollars. You didn't want to. You you made it seem like I was being the bitch for disregarding or or not taking the bet. But what did you do? You said, oh, I can't I can't make the bet because my religion doesn't want me. Whatever that bullshit uh, Christian cross that you say. So you're a bitch too. So let's just be honest. You're a bitch, and you're the people a bitch I listen too. to are bitches. And that's so you're admitting you're a bitch. So wait a minute. That's so you're admitting majority. you're a bitch. You're, well, I never, had, I never said I was a bitch. He's saying you're a bitch too. So you're admitting you're a bitch. You're starting off from the foundation that you're a bitch. But I never said anything about my, me being a bitch. So no, you stick you're, to you're you right stick to making. Like, listen, 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 listen. I do, I do actual. I do. Listen. Now he's talking over me. I do when I do consultations. I actually have worked with people like you before. And that's why I, I don't get mad. And that's why I don't get mad with people like you because I understand that you're the one with the problem. And I'm trying to help you out from the problem. I'm trying to get you to work what problem, through it. Man? There's no fucking problem here. That's yeah, there is, man. It's you're a, you're a closet man. You're homosexual. It sounds like you're a closet homosexual who's attracted to recognize. I think you're attracted to Jimmy, too. I think maybe it's a half Italian, half Irish thing. That's what gets you off. I mean, no, nah, listen, I'm on the as true as a, path of the Crimson history. Cross. I'm on the true path of the Crimson Cross. I'm not on a truck yeah. stop. I'm not on the path to yeah. the truck you're stop bathroom to please uh, uh, yeah, truckers, all right, man? Like That's I just what it is. That's what it is. I don't know what else to tell you. I'll get you one day. I don't know what to tell you. 
I'll get I'll get you one day. People like you and the other motherfuckers. He said I'll get, get you one day. I'll get you one day. Now he's physically threatening me. <laughs> Booty juice, you gotta you gotta take a yeah, break, man. Look, go get a drink. Right, I, I would, go get I would a cup take of your coffee. Head off. I would go take get some cocoa. Go get some. Listen, why? Yeah, listen, you sound. Listen, Booty juice, hold on, hold on, hold on, Booty juice. Ah, man, listen. See now, I feel bad because he's really mad now. He's talking about physical threats, going my health. I didn't want it to get to this point. You know, I I like um going at people when it's a friendly banter palaver back and forth but when it's it gets serious like this like he wants to take my fucking head off i mean come on you're, you're getting into some sick territory and i didn't want it to get into that territory so i, I don't know what to tell you but Luz, that's your problem when you want to go around taking heads off you should be worried about giving head at the truck stop that's how you make your living so oh, stick come on, with that. Come on. Well, i'm just saying he's talking about head head this head that i mean let's just keep it consistent so uh, booty juice thank you for your call and uh not on this sunday no violence on Sunday. That's the way it is. I yes. think he might have meant I'm going to suck your head off and I'm going to not take your head off. I'm <laughs> Shit, I, 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 I had to use the bathroom. What What the fuck did I miss? I just came back. Uh, I had to go to the bathroom. I come back. You're talking about somebody trying to take your head off? What did you do? Yeah, man. Going I mean, he at, got really... Uh, Sobers and BDA. You I know thought what? he was I've, going I've at me, this... but he was going at BDA. I've had this happen before where... You t you know because I, I and I that's, this is why I try not to talk too much about the true path. I only mention it intermittently. But some people really get you know. There's some people out there that sound like they're possessed. And whenever you mention um, one of the peak aspects of uh, spiritual ascension, such as the true path and crimson cross, it brings out the worst out of some people. Man, it's um, it's scary. I gotta tell you, it's frightening. But we are in a war. Wait, are, you say, are you saying booty juice is a, is a Satanist? Is that what you're I'm saying? Not saying? I'm not saying that, but it, I'm just saying it sounds like he's got something inside of him. And I'm not talking about a cock from the truck stop. I'm talking about some sort of, you know, actual entity um, constricting him. I don't oh. know. I'm just saying. Um, by the way, we got some f uh, super chats here that we got to get to. Hold on a second. Trying to navigate my way to this. Yeah, man. And... Uh, all right, shout out to Don Chile Relleno for his contribution with the super chat. <laughs> oh, come on, he's fanning the flames here. He says, Booty Loose is a straight panocha <laughs> dude. It's a straight panocha. Dude gets all emotional for no reason. He needs some serious help. No, I, I agree, man. See, again, I, I just want to, last thing, and then we'll leave it at that. I like it when we go back and forth. We have fun with people, you know, like we, we bust each other's balls. But when it gets serious like that, like evidently he really does have a problem with uh, some of us and so I, I don't know what to tell the more i try to uh, uh you know assuage the situation or, or calm it down he gets even angrier i don't know why so i guess there's just no you help know, it's, kind, it's kind of sober it's kind of sober's fault because his name is booty juice and he calls him booty loose the whole time <laughs> well <laughs> i mean i mean that's not my I thought problem, that was right? his name i thought that's how he introduced himself as though come um, on see... sober you knew he called himself booty juice Ah, uh, whatever. Listen, this, he's got a job to Dude's get to. Loose. So. Same shit, you know what I mean? Yeah, who gives a shit? Now, listen, um, no more phone calls here. Um, I think. We, yeah, hey, Jimmy, what did you think about that? Um, yes. Uh, not about the f last phone call, but uh, Ryan Garcia's father saying, <laughs> fuck Steve Kim. Uh, do you think, what, what do you think Steve, Steve is going to say about that on the next uh, three knockdown rule? Oh, yeah, I'm sure he'll have a giggle of it after that shit. <laughs> um, it's, it's, they've been going at it for a while, though. That goes back, that starts a couple of years ago. I mean, <clears throat> because Steve would say what it is. In, in a general, and it comes from not even the stuff, the antics in the ring. It's the well, how he play Golden Boy. Look, at Steve's a man of his word, and he respects people who are men of their word. You sign a contract, and just all of a sudden, you know what? I should be getting more money. I, I want a different contract. And he's, you know what I mean? You're demanding more money for no reason. Nothing that, it's not like you've gone, on, gone into the ring and done things that made Golden Boy say, holy shit, this kid's a mail ticket. It, it was just the manipulation, the lack of responsibility. Because God knows if we would have lost last night, there would have been fingers pointed to everybody but him. You know that to be true. That, that's his MO. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. You know what I mean? Um, and Steve called him out for it and called him out for his thin skin. He takes no criticism. Like, he marches out of interviews. If you say anything, he dislikes. He hangs around yes men and people who will stroke his, you know, ego and shit. I mean, there was something funny I could post, though. Did you see the thing with um, Bradley saying, if Garcia wins, I might as well give up my comment, give up commentary. <laughs> uh -huh. Give it up. No business doing that. Yeah, did give you up. see that video? Yeah. I heard about it. Yeah. Give it up. Yeah, I'll post it. Hey.
Chad, if you haven't, but you know, pretty funny. He's got to be a man. He's got to be a man of his word. So give well, it up, you don't buddy. Say stupid shit. You don't say stupid shit like that because no matter what, yeah, everyone here picked Haney to win by decision, but everyone here, and especially Mr. BDA, was saying, but don't count him out. And we all said it. Yeah, if he catches him early, I said it. Like you said, it. If he catches him early and, and gets him, don't let him get in a rhythm, he's a problem because he, he's got that quick hands. Yeah, we said, uh, look, so the fact we that he was trying, yeah, it's the fact that Bradley thought there was no chance. You know what I'm saying, dude? That's just asinine. No. Well, yeah, you, 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 you never want to count, uh, in my experience, especially at this, at this level of boxing, you never want to, uh, uh, um, you know, just essentially shut another guy off and say, oh, he's got no chance. Everyone's always got a chance at this level. That's why we people get too focused on picks. Oh, you got this big right. Oh, you got this big wrong. But how did that person break it down? And did, did he offer different um, ways in which the fight could go? And did the fight end up going the way that the person said it? I think that's more important than picks. So... Too many people decided to go against um, Garcia and they didn't give me, they didn't even give him a semblance of a chance, which was like, you know, the, what Timothy Bradley said, if he wins, I'm, I'm quitting my job as a commentator. I mean, come on, that's, that's asinine. See, BDA, like on this panel, we had our, di our doubts when it came to Ryan, but we understood that if you just talk about boxing and you just you just break it down he has all the all all the chances in the world right we just yep. needed to see him do it that's all it was and like i said i brought i uh, i i, I kind of brought up what what jimmy brought up before the fight how if he can catch him early how he would like to see how uh haney reacts to that because if Re haney reacts bad to it uh, basically, you know, that could be, that could be the game changer. Right. And, and that's exactly what ended up happening. So there is this logic to the breakdown and a lot of these fans, what they do is they get caught up in resumes. So not even the content It's like, Oh, well, he beat Lomachenko. He be, uh, Cambosas. He, um, he beat Jojo. Yeah. And he, you know, he, 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 he beat Linares, you know, but you're not breaking down the fucking fight, bro. You're not breaking it down. Like exactly. these, he was buzzed in all those fights you just mentioned. And none of those guys, none of those guys punch as hard as Ryan Garcia does. Fellas, okay, he, um, they may some of those guys I just mentioned might be better boxers, overall boxers, like in the case of Lomachenko, but Lomachenko does not punch as obviously he doesn't punch as hard as Ryan Garcia. Right, right. Uh, we we got to take a phone call here. Someone's been, been waiting. Uh, probably the last one of the, of the night, of the evening, rather. Uh, 929, you're on the air. 929, what's on your mind? BDA, what's up? It's Virtuoso. Oh, Virtuoso, what's up? Hey, Virtuoso. What's that? Hey, man, what's going on? Oh, um, oh. Listen, I am, I am smoking that fucking Devin Haney Blue Dream Pack right now. I mean, Wow. I did not see this coming because I I decided to pick Haney by decision, you know, stick behind the jab and, and try to move, but it, it's too routine. And it, it, it must be said that his defense is weak and, and, and he has a weak chin. He doesn't take a haymaker well, you know. Every time he gets, you know, he gets a, a few shots he gets in with, with, with a combination, you know, he gets flustered, you know. Um, I think he just gets by by just uh, – being a fast switch, you know, I don't think he, he's that uh, skillful as defense because, like, you see him on the inside, you know, every, every time, you know, he's in trouble or, you know, or, or it's a dogfight inside, you know, he collapses into, into his opponent's arms, you know, and it becomes a fucking clinch fence. Now, now, granted, you know, Ryan was clinching, but he is a guy that had power, and that is a difference maker, you know? You got to get this guy wobbled, you know, and th that's what he did. I mean, shit. And, to me, I, I I think it comes off, you know, as um, an aberration, you know, to to what people thought about about the whole Mayweather era and and how you got to look as a fighter, and it's like it, it that's not what it, what it's all about. There's styles to it, man, you know, and yeah. I, I I just think that that welterweight is its limit, you know. I think that's the ceiling right there because you're you're afraid, you're fighting fighting somebody that's um it's your size, your age, and can can really hit. And that's how you look, you know, because you've been going by, you know, fighters that are smaller than you and you outweigh them. And now you got caught, you know, so that's how it goes. There you go, man. 
All right. Well, listen, great points there, Virtuoso. I uh, always appreciate you calling in and uh, call back next time. Anytime. Thank you, man. Thank you. Um, yeah, man, because look, um, Garcia did hurt, hurt, was, uh, he did hurt Duarte, by the said, way. I'm sorry, go ahead. Just, yeah, just real quick. He hurt Duarte. And that dude is a strong guy, strong neck. The fact that the Garcia was able to hurt him. Uh, so that's why I'm unsurprised that he was able to hurt uh, Haney. But go ahead, Chief. Sorry, what do you say? Uh, somebody said that all this weight cut that uh, Devin's been doing for a while may have hurt his punch resistance for, for eternity, like the rest of his career. So if he had a chin to begin with, which we don't know, because the first time we saw it tested was uh, against Linares, who's his natural featherweight, <clears throat> and on the downside of his career. Um, and he got roughed up by other people, but the only time we really saw his knees buckled to where he was seeing, you know, stars and, you know, looking at the referee and seeing three of them and trying to hit the one in the middle. That was only against Linares. Uh, Loma really didn't stagger him, even though he knocked his head around a few times and, and forced him to clinch. And same with Jojo Diaz, but they did make it uncomfortable to uh, and roughed him up. So that that part. But the only time we saw his chin checked again was against a guy like you just said. Um, Ryan's got a solid punch, but has all of this uh, starving himself just permanently drained any sign of any punch resistance he's ever had? Like, has he permanently damaged himself? ever be able to really take a good shot especially that was a beating he took that that was very similar, even though it went the distance even though it went the distance and he won several rounds where spence won no rounds that was a donald curry lloyd hunnigan uh errol spence bud crawford kind of career changing beating haney took yes. last night absolutely I, I i'm that's what i saw bro i don't think and we talked about this yesterday now yeah, we're we gonna did. find out if this was just a gimmick, or this guy has the the dog, you know that dog that he can come back and and, and he really wants to do this because that kind of beating that doesn't that sticks with him and he got embarrassed. Like make no mistake about it, you were embarrassed. Yeah. You know? Did you say that dog? I'm a dog. I'm a dog. Yeah, I'm a dog. I'm moving different. Yeah, man. I mean, that's a, that, that's what they always say, man. I'm moving different. Uh, that's me. That's my voice, right? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's recognized right there. Anyway, man. Listen, we've. I think you guys have said it all. We've said it all. It was a fantastic uh, night of fights. It gives us a lot of material to talk about, and uh, we still got many ways to go, man. Long ways to go. Like, uh, what was the name of that story there? Uh, I got go many miles to go before I sleep. That's the same thing here, man. We got Canelo fighting in two weeks. We've got uh, Inui Neri, Neri, and then we've got uh, Uzik yep. versus Fury. I mean, come on, huh? Mm -hmm. Come on, come on. Don't tell me boxing was is that, dead. Was that, uh, was that the Chronicles of Narnia? I got many miles to go and many promises to keep and many miles to go before I sleep or something like that. I thought that was Robert Foster. Or, I mean, oh. Robert Frost. Oh, I forget the guy's name. I mean, it was fucking Red Dead. Nah, you Robert guys are talking Frost, about man. me, bro. I said that. Oh, oh recognize that. Okay, that's right. That's right. Uh, they they stole all your stuff, recognize. Like in the Absolutely. Sopranos. They plagiarized every last piece that you said, and they made, you know, a huge living off of it. You should sue for royalties. Chief, I, I just want to get paid. That's it, Chief. I just want to get paid. It was like Speaking in the Sopranos. Paid, I'm, was... I'm, you, I'm still not on the payroll here. <laughs> well, listen, you got to put your, you got to pay your dues, man. Or you got to do it like, apparently the, the rumor is never source pays to be on the panel. So I've yet to see any of those, uh, of that money. So. But hopefully, uh, hopefully we get, we, hey, you know what? Uh, people say that, um, I do need to be Sobers, more consistent in my appearances. You are correct, say, sir. My apologies. Pe people say that Sobers pays to be on the panel. And apparently Carlos gives him the money. You know, that non-existent Carlos. <laughs> that, uh, I mean, I, uh, Come on, man. Hey, by the way, hold on a second. We still, we got a phone call. Phone, phone, uh, two phone calls. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No problem. No problem. We, we, we aim to please. Let's get to the phone calls before we go. Um, 419, you're in the air. 419. What's in your mind? Uh oh. Hey, what's up, BDA? Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, Tito, what's up, man? My boy, Tito. Hey, heck yeah, what's up, recognize? Hey, what's up to the panel? Hey, heck yeah, man. Hey, Yo. um, you know, giving my opinion on the fight last night and the things sure. going on in boxing, if I could get that, you know? Absolutely. Hey, um, you know, Haney, you know, I, I kind of feel bad for Haney, you know, because, hey, um, at least Haney was fighting everybody. But yeah, you know, Ryan, you know, huh? It's like 
when I jumped on the, the YouTube and and the 2019-20, like all the craziness of lies, if you don't watch the stuff, you know, huh? It's confusing. Because I said, man, Ryan's going crazy. He's going to get beat up. You know, all this stuff talking and, huh? It just was, you know, huh? But I said, hey, remember my last Kumite on there? Me and D, we had a debate with Ryan Garcia and, uh, um, D was calling on Tank 2.0 and we had that debate. Remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. I you, remember that. I yeah. remember you beat him. You beat him that day. Yeah. Hey, I can't recognize you were a judge and, and unrivaled. And then that sissy slugger right. saying voted for D. Yeah, what the heck? But the real boxing people voted, you know. But anyway, what I'm saying is back at that time in 2020, I had Ryan, you know, he wanted Tank number one first. You know, that that's what he said when he when he come out as pro. Tank's been sitting there for so long, man, not fighting, you know, huh? So I'm hoping that, you know, that should have been Tank last night. So I'm hoping, you know, that um, he, he thought he would have knocked him out you know? if he beat a poor Tank at, that night. He would have knocked, knocked little Tank out. There would have been no doubt about it. Yeah, he, he, I would. Yeah, I think so, too. Heck, yeah, I recognize that's what I think, too, um. Ryan should have never been in a hurry. You know, Tank's got a professional watcher over him. You know, Floyd. Floyd's a smart guy, man. He knows when somebody's having trouble making weight or they shouldn't be there. And then yeah, the those weight stipulations before and afterwards, Ryan should have never did that, man. He should have just waited. You know, but, uh, hey, that's how it went. That's hey, um. It. And another thing I wanted to get to, hey, did the pay-per-view numbers come out yet? For the uh, for this fight? Not yet. Yeah. No, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. I, 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 and it takes it's like zone. a week, usually. Yeah, and on top yeah. of that, it's it, the it, zone. It'll be so like yeah. in the middle of this week coming up. This week coming up, this, it should be coming out like, let's say, Friday, something like that. Yep. Yeah, I hope it does good because um, you know how um, a lot of people got tanked. And they respect the Tank. Who knows? Tank could be one of the best. But, man, he just ain't showing it in the ring. He brings people up and wait. He makes, you know, huh? I'm just ready to see him step up, man. And then if these pay-per-view numbers are good, it'll be good for boxing. You're absolutely and then I right hope Tank's numbers, you know, aren't going to show, you know, because um, he don't deserve it. Whoa, wait, well, hey, well, we'll see what happens, Tone. We we'll see what happens. Always good to hear from you. Uh, sign up for the next hey, Kumite, T-tone. whenever that is. Hey, T-tone. Yeah, go ahead, yeah, remember the good remember, remember the good old times when when Trinidad beat Vargas. That was some good old times, huh? Ah, oh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> that was the Breaking good old days. Day. Well. Hey, that was my favorite. Yeah. Night. Hey, the good times are rolling. The good times are rolling. <laughs> Recognize. Ah, that's, that's it. Listen. That's it. Heck okay, yeah, man. Hey, and yeah, you sign up that Kumite. And you get them Canelo haters. You know how like Genghis Khan, you could come bring every two, three years, come back and weed them out. That's right. And I'll sign yeah. up. There you go. The Golden Horn. Oh, hey, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good show. Uh, thank you, T-Tone. Thank you for calling in, man. Catch you on the next one. Take it easy out there. That was Recognize T-tone. you know good and darn well that the night that turned out I beat Tito was one of the best nights of my life. Uh, Bro. I actually... I actually that. hated that Tito night. Tito had me dying. One day he called in and he said, Hey, recognize. Remember the good old days when uh, Salvador Sanchez beat you? Oh, yeah, good, yeah. <laughs> hey, man, I was oh, like five God. years old when that fight happened. I don't I don't remember it, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was four. I was 27. All right, listen, uh, we got to get to another phone call here before we go. Uh, let's go to another phone call. Let's go to 214. 214, you're on the air. 214, what's on your mind? What's up, BDA? It's D Block. Two times. Oh, what's up? Uh, what's up, Deep Look? You know, I, I couldn't talk like I want to talk because, you know, I have my daughters. They're like, Dad, can you take us to Starbucks? And I had to be Starbucks. in a long ass line waiting and waiting. <clears throat> and now I'm here fresh, all alone, just me and you guys. Wow, that's kind of dirty. This makes me feel so happy <laughs> to know that if Tank Davis, would have fought a legit Ryan Garcia and had no mole in the camp, had he didn't have to do all this bullshit, I feel like it would have been a different type of fight. Because you just, you just, it doesn't matter, you know, 
Devin Haney, is a, at that moment, he was a top 10 pound-for-pound fighter in the world. Undisputed when he came up. WBC champion, even, even though the belt wasn't going to matter. But I feel like he beat a credible opponent, and you got to give him respect for that. Now, Tank Davis, I can't give him credit for that Ryan Garcia fight, man. Because is that right? you don't you didn't follow the rules yourself. You know what I mean? And and I know that Ryan, you know, he went over three pounds. I know he did that. But there was a reason. He felt the flashback. They're not going to deplete me this time, right, for what Tank did. And I can't wait because I think, BD, I'm going to tell you something. I think these numbers are going to do great. Is I was, right? like I said, I was at the bar last night kicking it with my people, and it was packed. There was a line outside where people wanted to see this fight. There was hype at the end of the day, and I'm tell and it sold out. You got to give respect to you, two young Americans. Ninety seconds. Like I said earlier, you got to give respect. Do you think that Ryan Garcia, one hundred percent, he ain't perfect in the ring, but he does bring that good left left hook. He got great power, man. Every time, every time he touched uh, Devin Haney with combinations, he went all at it and he hurt him bad. Do you think it would have been a different aspect of a fight with Tank Davis? What you got to say I, that? I, well, I'll tell you what, man. I'll put it to you this way, D-Block, but I, I'm going to move on here from the call, so hopefully you get, you get to hear the answer seconds. of the air. Hopefully you get to oh, hear yeah. the answer off the line, man. But uh, thank you for your call, man. Um, I'll say this. I think Davis certainly felt like it was going to make a difference. That's why he imposed that uh, weight uh, rehydration clause and that yep. catch weight. Otherwise, he wouldn't have... And he said it himself. Don't come at me and say I'm making an excuse, blah, blah, blah. He's the one that said it out of his own mouth. So take it up with him. Don't take it up with me. Um, by the way, we got to get to another phone call here. Last one, bef 30 seconds before the lines end. Last call of the evening. Uh, 562, you're on the air. 562, what's on your mind? Hi, BDA. And I don't like Jenny Licabucho. Uh I want to talk about Canelo. Now, what's up, BDA? How you doing? <laughs> what's up, <laughs> That was Frank? my uh, Dora impression. <laughs> it was a pretty good. You're, you're a good imp impersonator, uh, impressionist, whatever they call it. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying, man. You got some classic characters. I'm just trying to be like them. Well, you just be yourself. Uh, yeah, BDA. Oh, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead, go ahead, man. Go ahead. I'm so Oh, okay. Uh yeah, uh, you threw me off a little bit. Yeah, as far as uh did we do a anybody do a welfare check on black T V? Uh ah, that's come a on. PSA. Someone <laughs> check on Black T V. He was going uh insane. Um, and uh, yeah, Mexicans yeah. for Hanky drank the Kool Aid and uh, caught the mothership last night. Ah, come on, what's going on here? <laughs> You're making me put up uh, a disclaimer here. Well, yeah, I... okay, okay, uh, I'll keep it uh, uh, PC. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I like I said, I think this was great for boxing, it was absolutely exciting. Uh, you can see the excitement in the fans. Uh, Ryan uh, showed up and showed out. And I just got to say, you know, that's the thing uh, with Hanky is we hadn't really seen him against someone with his, his same physical size and, and attributes. And, uh, you know, this is what we always talk about. My last point, I'll finish and then you got to go, is that, uh, you know, these, uh, these guys, they're crying about the weight. Uh, well, Hanky should have never tried to kill himself to make weight. But we always hear Hanky, Securus, and even Crawford to extend, oh, they beat everybody in the book, all these hypothetical matchups, and uh, this is why they fight the fights. You know, on any given night, um, you know, someone could put you to sleep. You know, we, we never give guys like the Payda and um, Cruz a chance, but uh, that's why, you know, we want to see these matches. We want to see Crawford against Boots Ennis. We want to see Boots Ennis versus, you know, the next uh, viable contender. But, uh, you know, and, and who knows, man, Canelo Munguia might be a shootout. Canelo could, could have some... Uh, dark moments uh, i think he'll pull it off but uh yeah man these are these are great fights and, and it was great for boxing and thank you for for doing the show so we can uh, speak our piece well thank you for calling in uh frank always appreciate your calls and uh we'll talk later man take it easy other okay thank you thank you, shout thank out you. every chat there you go man yeah shout out, to every super so, shout out to frank bay check out his channel boxing with frank bay open uh, uh panel Anybody can get it, as he likes to say. It's actually quite a friendly show. It's not as contentious or, or adversary as it might sound. But uh, go check it out, man. Now, in the meantime, we do have to go. The phone lines are closed. So shout out to everybody that called in, everybody that donated with the Super Chat. 
Um, really appreciate it. And man, we'll be we'll try to be back later on this week with another show. Uh, what, what what's going on this week, by the way? What is it that we get um, in the? It's I don't think there's there's a big. I think the the, the Canelo ones not this week. The next this week we'll have yeah. the, the zone. Week. Jose Lamides versus Rancis Bartholomew. All right, whatever. And the return of Virgil Ortiz taking on the always tough or durables, oftentimes Thomas Dolorme. Uh, so we'll see what happens with that one. So, you know, a little, a little something to I'm keep looking us forward afloat. to that. I'm looking forward to see how Ortiz looks because remember, he only had one one round on his comeback. Yeah. So I'd like to yeah, see him get some right. rounds and see how he looks. You're absolutely right there, Jimmy. And by the way, Dark Hey Dog says, "When is the second Renaissance be been waiting for one?" Well, as you can see, we've been uh, we've been busy with this uh, boxing business, but um, uh, you know, we, well, I'll try to be back with some at least one of those watch along videos. Uh, excuse me, episodes. Those are easy to do because I just pop up pop open my playlist and we watch a bunch of videos. Um, shout out to Rafael Garza for his contribution to the super chat. He says. The reason Mexicans dominate the pay-per-view market is because they don't care if two Mexicans fight each other, but the blacks give you reasons why two blacks shouldn't fight each other. Mexicans just want to see fights. Well, shout out to Rafael Garza for his contribution with the Super Chat. There is a certain degree of truth to that. I will say this. I'm Mexican, and my experience amongst uh, fellow Me Mexicans is that there's some hardcore boxing fans there. And I've noticed the same thing with the Caucasians, or Caucasoids, as uh, Fighter Spirit like, likes to call them. A lot of these Caucasians, uh, they love to watch fights, uh, whether it's a Puerto Rican versus a, an Afro-Anglo or a Mexican versus Puerto Rican or whatever. They just want to see big fights. But we've said that before, and it's the truth, man. You, you People can dislike what we're saying, but, I mean, it's a lot of people have noticed it. Uh, there is one group out there that makes it racial more than any other, and that's, unfortunately, Afro-Anglos. Uh, it is what it is. But, I mean, at the end of the day... It's it's a good time to be a boxing fan. There is some hope with the uh, uh, the Saudis pumping money into this. We're starting to see the red tape being cut loose. Uh, fighters are leaving the PBC, so that's easier to make fights nowadays. So we're again we got a bunch of good fights down the pipeline. So it's gonna be a fantastic year, or it looks like it's gonna be a fantastic year. And shout out to Never Sobers for his contribution with the super chat. He says smoking on that hostile nostril pack tonight. <laughs> hostile nostril Damn. pack. I don't know. Oh man, you really got to—you got to leave that alone, man. Smoking, not good for you. But hey, it is what it is. Hey, maybe you know what? Who am I to be telling people what to do? Because a lot of a lot of us were telling Ryan Garcia what to do, and he ended up having the last laugh. Here he is. I was going to say that. This is for Ryan Garcia having the last laugh. What is right is right. I like that laugh, man. I like that laugh. There you go, man. Yeah. What's right is right. It's very sinister. It's a sinister laugh. Hey man, he played us all, man. He played us all. Even those, even those of us that thought the fight was gonna be more competitive than other people thought. It's hey BDA, no, whenever yeah. I make a good point, I want you to play that soundbite. <laughs> yeah. ah, ah. <laughs> what the fuck? All right. Well, listen. Again, shout out to. Shout out to everybody that donated with the Super Chat, everybody that called in. Hope you guys enjoyed calling in. Hope everybody else enjoyed the Thank rest of the show Thank you for using well. Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye. Uh, Shut up. Honey, take it Bye. easy. Uh, take it easy. What else? What else? Yeah, so sh hey, shout out to everybody that joined us with, uh, the, on the panel here. Recognize uh, Sobers, Jimmy, Chief. Got to give it up to you guys for joining. Always appreciate it. And um, Always a pleasure. Thank you, thank you. And um, like I said, everybody that don't even the Super Chat, everybody that tuned in, don't forget to hit the like on the way out if you've yet to do so already. Don't forget, to, you can check out these episodes on Spotify, iTunes, and Spreaker at your leisure. We will be re-uploading yesterday's episode because apparently there was a glitch. we got to work on that. And um, yeah, that's about it, man. Uh, give a shout out to everybody in the chat. Trey, Trey Ason, shout out to him. Um, who else we got here? Hold on a second. Trey Aeson, Chitlin Distributor, Vince Vegas, The Quags, Vladdy V, J Rocks, Dark Hey Dog, one of the initiated, Eparukua, Sam Rando, and another of the initiated. Shout out to him, um, Rafael Garza, Eddie Valenzuela, So Passive Live, The Quags, another one of the initiated, The Anointed, Round One, Protector General. And if I forgot anybody, well, it's because we gotta go. But shout out to everybody in the chat, really appreciate you jumping in. Catch you on the next one, another show later on this week, hopefully. We'll catch you then. Take it easy, fellas. Thanks for watching.
might kiss you on the mouth. No, no, I'm not, I'm not cool with that. Just, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. One more time. I'm disappointed in everyone who I mean, I'm dealing with degenerate animals. I'm, I'm disappointed in everyone who Yo, yo, Disappointed in everyone who All right, all right, come on. Honestly, I can't do it, man. I'm, I'm disappointed in everyone. Let me tell you why. It's gonna be all right, Nicky. Go ahead.